Okay. So, uh, stream marker, and let's get started. So, time to do uh, Losars. I am going to treat this very differently from the other tier lists because, let's be honest, unless you are a Giga Chad, you are not. Uh, you're not going to choose these servants over like a five star in most cases. These low stars are to hold you over until you get better uh, units for those specific niches. Like use um, Jason. You'd use Jason until you got like a Muramasa, uh, Takiru, like an AoE arts saber. This tier list is pretty much, if you're EX or A, you can be used even when you have other options because of cost reasons. Like these units are good enough that even though they're low stars, you can use them for your purposes. Uh, if you like, and like they're okay to invest in. That's the main point of this. Uh, for a lot of these servants, they're year one. I'm not talking about hit counts. I'm not talking about base stats because they're low stars. No matter what, they're not going to compare to a five star. Eventually, you probably will get a replacement. That's just how it is. And you'll stop using them. This tier list more. Uh, and this saves time because I'm not talking about like upstairs with their kits and everything. Uh, Probably not even MP gain that much. Uh, that might be more for three stars and like single targets over loopers because there really aren't that many loopers. If they can do it, I'll mention it. Other than that, this should be a lot, a lot faster than the welfare tier list. All right. So we are going to go by this class and then ID order. Just so we go through like what characters were released in what order. Uh, based on the class. So first, Caesar. He gets a lot of praise. But the thing is, he is very, very, very much one turn pump and dump. He is not nearly as good as people say. Because there's too much RNG tied to it and or you have to set up for it. He still has the tactics. He still has the base charisma. And his buff skill is star gen. His skills are shit. They are not good. He's, he is carried by the supports. Buffed MP. He gets more uh, attack buffs based on how low his HP is. It is possible to um it's very possible to get the full 50 percent but again these this is only for one turn and you're probably not getting back to the mp unless you are specifically using caesar to like kill shit it's solid though but b but uh, it really should be c for the skills yeah, C for the skills. They're they're so bad. His skills are so bad. It's like one turn and then that's it. You're not if you, it's fine for like a raid if the HP is low, but if you get to the point you can't one shot, you are like stuck in the water and you have no way to get back up. Yeah, if I can keep it, like, this short for each character, we're fucking golden. Uh, I have, like, a three-hour cap on this because I do not want to be sober all day. Next up, Gilles de Rey. Yeah, tactics, MP gen for himself, bus performance with 100% uptime, cool. But he has an arts MP and he flicks defense down on himself. Or uh, 100% attack, five turns. Mighty Chains actually make this better 
but he only has the one quick card. This shit is horrendous. I don't know why they haven't buffed him again. It's like, and it's not even a damaging MP. That's the worst fucking part. Don't use him. Don't ever use him. Furious. This guy I 100% think is better than Caesar. 100%. And it's not because I hate Quick. Quick is my favorite card type. It's because he's consistent. It is because he is consistent. It, and it also helps he has a full Gorilla deck. So very nice for uh, Bitch. So 30% attack buff with mental debuff resistance. 20% buster, 50% buster crit damage, and 25 defense. And this skill used to be, like, actual talk shit. Like, this actually would gimp you from doing more damage. So he got a great buff. Dodge, evade. He has a solid kit. It's not good. It's not great. But it's, like, workable. Especially because these are, like, low cooldowns. You can just double stack with bitch. You got a goofy chest? What, an Honkai? Yeah, also, we're not talking about pens. I might, like, I might bring up this if they have a Berserker, but other than that, probably not touching this uh, for the recording. He's got buffed MP. He reduces def uh, debuff resistance by 20% and defense down. B at the very least. Might go up higher by... No battery and his hit counts to get back his MP is not great. Like, he would actually go into A if his hit counts were better. Like, I'm not bringing them up that much, but, like, that it's a literal fact. Next, Bedivere. This is going to be an easy A. Uh, because this is a really good skill buff for multi-core. Like, this is really nice. 30% battery, that's static. Again, nice, because you don't have to worry too much. And party debuff resist. Defense up. Debuff resistance. Buffed MP. 30% buster. Scales well with the MP damage. Am I supposed to find the chest? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So, he is stupidly good in multi-core because his battery is static 30. Uh, using lures on low stars is a bit of a yikes unless it's, like, a support. So, him not needing to lure this skill to be able to have his battery, helpful. Not helpful, though, because you need... If you want to use him in like buster farming, like you need this, but again, it's kind of just to help out hold out. It was sorry, it was to hold out until there was you got a single target uh buster saber. But now with Iori eventually going to evocation, like you're not gonna have to worry about luring because Iori just like works better for single core, multi core. All he really was providing was this, like it's this isn't that impactful that you would pick bedivere over a yori for farming because damage especially if you don't have mp5 bedivere damage is going to be an issue easy a easy easy a Then next up on the chopping block is where are you, Jason? Fuck. There. Okay. Yeah, Jason. He literally can like his skills are dog shit. His skills are dog shit for like his purposes. Why you would actually use him? Only thing that really matters is this twenty percent attack. 
and you're still not luring it. You could use him as a like support for Argo related allies, and it's not like the list is only ever gonna go up. It's never gonna get smaller. It's only gonna get better. And unironically, he actually buffs Theseus, who we're about to talk about next, and gives him like generic stuff that he would want as a crit unit. So he has more, he's more than just a farmer, but it like his primary function right now is farmer. When his MP got buffed, this was the dumbest shit. Because this is absurd. If you have the damage for multi-core and the first two waves, he's able to actually clear. You are guaranteed 40 fucking stars for turn three. You are guaranteed 40 stars in an arts setup. Like, even before this buff, I thought he still would have gone into EX because there weren't AoE art sabers. You literally, you weren't able to farm with them besides getting Muramasa. Jason, with his MP buff, there's no way he isn't going into EX. Like, you would, you would genuinely pick him over Tomoe. You would use him for farming over Tomoe. Like, and also, before Takaru came out, because his buff came a year before that, Void Shiki didn't have her buff either. She wasn't able to black rare loop. And Muramasa was a new-ish five-star. They new-ish, because Jason gets this buff this year, and Muramasa came out last year. And last on this list is Theseus. This is going to like genuinely be another EX. Like I put him there on last year list on the update. He is definitely going to be EX. They're like, and this I will bring up like hit count because he's modern. That's the big thing. He's a modern low cost unit. Just came out uh like four months ago. Good deck. Good stats. Ridiculously good skills. Like, come on. They gave this guy everything to be, like, what an arts crit DPS needs to be. Arts up at, at four-star numbers. It's a 20 battery. It's whatever. Stars return. Star weight. Crit damage of arts cards. 15 stars. 30% attack. You reduce... Uh, attack on the enemy, another 15 stars, passes or whatever, anti berserker as the append, and then the MP is like damage mod against demonic beast servants, and then super effective against giants. He fucks up Ibuki. If you have a berserker, uh, Ibuki as an enemy. They're dead. She's dead. She cannot fight him. Same with Asterius. Like, he wrecks her shit so hard. And then he just drops stars and he ramps up crit damage on his MP. How the fuck is this a three star? That's why I actually want to know. Because this is at bare minimum a four stars kit. At bare minimum, this is a four star kit. It's arguably five star if this was 30. I could genuinely see this being a five star if this was a 30% battery. Because everything just fucking works. He's held back by the fact that he's a low star. Like a lot of these are just like bad units that have like Something that makes him stand out. Theseus is, is like literally held back because they made him a three star. All right. Sabres are already done. If I can keep this pace, then this, this is not going to be a long video. So let's definitely keep this up. Archers. 
Start off with Robin. He had, much like Waver, he had to get his entire kit reworked. Because, oh my fucking god, were these skills atrocious? Or was this atrocious? That was a skill, 15% down. But the issue now is that if this poison doesn't land, Robin's not doing damage. Huge, huge part about this. He does not have a buff success chance in his kit. He needs to land this. If he doesn't, you better hope you have command codes to put the uh, poison on. Otherwise, you are shit out of luck. This definitely, Golden Rule is a skill that is constantly being buffed. And he has that at the lowest rank. He definitely should have had this buff a long time ago. It's not the most common skill to get buffed, but it is a pattern of like higher rarity servants getting this skill buffed. Gilgamesh, I still think his golden rule needs to be buffed. It's good, but he still needs, he needs his last buff. They don't need to double buff any skills, but his golden rule does need to buff. Uh, but back to Robin Hood. Dodge for a turn, evasion for a turn, 20 stars. This is good. But yeah, this MP, again, it's, uh, if you do not, it's got good, super effective scaling. That is what I will say. The super effective scaling for this is super, super nice. But again, if you do not land the poison, he's not going to, it's not going to be a good time. But. Uh, real quick, MP damage. Oh, actually, let me try and do this. Nope. Yeah, like my students show me how to like turn this shit into dark mode. Uh, and yeah, I I know I knew I couldn't do it on my keyboard or on this. Like this. Uh, yeah. So Robin's damage, it's respectable. It's respectable. It's higher than five stars at MP1. But that's also ignoring niche. If any of the four stars have a niche, they pretty much, they're just more consistent. Like Charon. If you have MP1 Charon, he out you don't need Robin as long as you're fighting Earth Attribute. So like he is good. He is going to hold you over until you get someone better. He is going to actually hold you over until you get someone better. Is that? Uh okay. I'll I'll yeah, okay. Let's do it. Wait, which account? Which server? Uh, eh, probably gonna have to mute game audio then. If you want, don't matter. Uh, okay, okay. We'll get we'll get to it in a bit as I go through this. Uh, next up, Uriel. Oh. Uh, ch -ch -ch. right. So again, not talking about here. Besides this MP gain, this is huge. Because she has very, very low hit counts, but her MP gain is high. Uh, she at least has two hits on her face cards. That makes refund a lot better than, like, other servants, like, say, Artoria or, like, older un like, units that came out around this time uh, that have bad hit counts. This, ba this, this needs a buff, but Arts kind of doesn't need as much help as other um card types when it comes to batteries like it's not the biggest deal but because of how bad her hit counts are 
You kind of need this. This kind of needs to be better. Charm uh, mail is on the skill, but it's also on the MP. Art's up 30%. It's good. It's standard. She also has 50% debuff resistance, so it's just annoying to try to use gimmicks like Robin's on her. Like, you're probably not landing the poison. But, I mean, you wouldn't be using Robin against Uriel because, A, he's a male, and, B, she's not a saber. Anti-Berserker, another good thing. Damage to one enemy, and with extra copies, it scales up the super effective. Reduces their attack with 150% chance this fights any kind of magic resist. And also charm enemies or charm males. Uh, yeah. She 100% would be EX if it wasn't for the fact. Like, if she was a berserker with this kit, 100% EX. But he's an archer. He's only able to fight sabers. Uh, and having in like this heavily niched, I'm not sure if I can put a three star at EX. Yes, she does this better than uh Artemis at anti male, but again, still a three star. Artemis would have like Artemis would have a higher ceiling. That's how I want to say it. Artemis would have a higher ceiling. I mean, at least until there's a servant that can, like, make all servants male. Like, <laughs> oh, God. Merle gets a buff. He gives a penis to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that would actually be the funniest shit Merlin turns the enemy into a male and then he gives uh, like a power mod <laughs> against males that actually would be the funniest fucking no 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 okay no just it just turns the male that that I think would just be funny enough uh, but back to this, uh, I wouldn't say it's serious, but yeah, she's only, she's only not EX because she is so heavily catered, catered to males. Like she quit, she can't be used as a universal single target, uh, unit. She has to be brought against males. All right. Next up, David. Defense up 50%. The tank's a lot and a decent size heal. Uh, everyone gets a dodge. Everyone gets healed. And mental debuff cleansed. Again, it's okay, but it's not like the best skill. And then a charisma. His skills are dog shit. You only use him for his MP. Super effective against giant enemies. And I guess skill seal. But this is why you use him. Only for the MP. I definitely cannot say, like, you should only be, uh, I can't, I can't say you would use him, like, universally. Not when it, like, it is so heavily, if you're fighting a giant, bring David. If, if you're not fighting a giant, you're not bringing him. Actually, like, eh, no, no, I'm not going to, like, put headphones on at least now. I think I need to charge. All right, let's do this uh, pull. Sorry for the wait. But I kind of didn't want to, like, interrupt the three list, but you did spend points on it. All right. Luckily, I got tickets. And it's dog shit. All right. All right. 
back to Kid Gil. Uh, <clears throat> all his hits are average, which is except extra, which is okay. It's like based off Gilgamesh's kit anyway. Uh, weak charisma, not buffed. Charm humanoid when humanoid is like all almost all servants, except these. Ten stars per turn, and then MP generate. His MP does put a lot of shit on, but they, they fucked up with the, the buff. They fucked up so hard with this buff. Like, this is, um, this is Jolter Lily's, um, treatment on this MP. Like, some of, this at least should have been three turns. This at least should have been three turns. Like, understandably, I un like I get why they didn't make this part uh or these three turns. That is actually ridiculous. Um but like this this part should have been three turns. I wanna put him in C. Because it's like you're not there's not like he's not doing anything groundbreaking. Yeah, like he's not doing anything that can't be replaced by other units. Some even some on this list. Like it's just an MP that does some stuff, but not a whole lot. Like they're not MPing, this doesn't matter. Uh and them critting. Not not when it's only one turn. Not when it's only one turn. So, yeah. I think C's fine. All right, Billy. Billy is a more interesting one. Because he actually has a 50% battery as a welfare. I... I literally cannot ignore that. Uh, he, like, especially when Tristan is like, Tristan and Bobbins, she are like two of the ones I would like go to, especially as quick. Both of them are story locked. So having access to them is not the easiest thing. You have, like, you have to purposely summon. Um, Yeah, but there's two welfares that are also single target quick. Brandon, neither one of them has a battery nearly as good as this one. But his skills don't do that much. Oh, this this one in combination with like uh running to star bomb seas, because like ruler Scotty could help the star issue but it's not she's not gonna help that much he only has one buster card but this is a lot of crit damage in kit 150 percent in kit with a 50 battery and that's pretty much it buff mp reduces crit uh crit attack for three turns and also these quick cards are not good. They are not good. Rulers, uh, regular Scotty can only do so much in terms of refund help. So it's pretty much like acting like a normal quick where he kind of has to get the refund from cards. And if he doesn't, you better have enough battery. It's a lot harder to run him with like better CEs to let him do more damage. And in which case, you also want to be able to crit, too. He's like jack of all... He's jack of uh, trades, master of neither one of them. Because uh, I believe his MP damage is also, like, low. Yeah, it's low. Like, he is beaten out by Paris. He's beaten out by another... 
a lower rarity, low cost unit. For setups, it's cool, but for actual function, hmm. I'm gonna put him in B only because like that 50 battery does, I'm not gonna say it doesn't help because it helps so much. And you can you can give him stars. It's not like you're never gonna have stars. He's also he's quick. He's gonna get stars. Uh it's just timing is gonna be you need the stars when you need them. Yeah. Like he's he's more universal than David. All right, next, Tora. All right, Buster up. 30% for three turns. Defense and dodge. My protection from arrows. Party Buster up, so 50% Buster in his own kit. And party battery up 10%. So... Already, this is like really good stuff for multi core. Uh, a lot of these, uh, like, sorry, the K KFC King of Fried Chicken, uh, she just got her second skill buff that did something kind of similar, getting an AoE 10% battery. I think for multi core, you might have an option to use him. Uh, and he, but that's pretty much only going to be if he if it's a 50% CE for multi-core. I definitely would not recommend starting from zero, especially because he's Buster. Like Buster just doesn't have the best multi-core like utility just because Bitch only buffs certain uh, like one unit. Anti Berserker is nice. Buffed MP. Uh, power mod against Demonic with ramp up and for three turns. This, I actually forgot he had. Um, so, like, if like you're using him with Vich, you're adding another power mod to all that along with the crit damage. It's like, essentially. I 100% think he's be like better than Kid Gil. 100%. Mm. Actually, yeah, actually, like, why would you use Kill Get Kid Gil if you have Tota when they're both free? Yeah, I like, I honestly can't see a reason to use Kid Kid Gil over Tota. He might get moved down, but I think the guy is solid. He doesn't have a big battery, but at least he has some kind of charge. He technically can do farming, which, uh, I mean, anyone can now with Summer of Chloe, but at least he was able to do it before. Next. William Tell. Super solid. This guy is super solid. Good, uh, good MP gain for the hit count. It's like two, like oh, basically two percent, like one point nine eight. Uh, and he's an archer. He's expected to crit, so the number is going to go even higher. Good, just good hit counts in general. Skill seal thirty star bomb. He got this buff, thirty percent arts, uh, debuff immunity for three turns, and now. He can reliably keep the uptime on his MP. But the thing is, the unit needs to have dodge. And it cannot be unremovable dodge. He loses out on so much damage if the enemy is not dodging. But at the same time, 
he does just have like solid crit uh, capabilities. Sure hit. Again, nice to have, but most archers do have this. And yeah, like he literally does double damage if if the enemy is able to dodge. Uh, unfortunate, like <sighs> he would have gone here, but the the power gap is just he's good as an arts crit. I kind of want to switch these now. I kind of want to switch these. Yeah, I'm switching. I I think he's better than Robin, but he he would be here, but the enemy needs to dodge, and they're not always going to dodge, if they even have it. So again, niche. I'm not like I'm not gonna put him in C tier because he's definitely not C tier. But he's not unless we have someone that can give dodges to enemies. Like if we get another like another low star that can actually do that, then I will happily move him up or put him in super niche. Because that is one hell of a setup. All right, Paris. Again, looking more modern because he came out what lost about five or right before it. Uh, okay, hit count. Much like William Tell, he wants to like he uh makes a weak spot or like comparable to the second skill. If he removes the buffs, they get a weak spot. And it is super effective damage on the weak spot. So, very, again, very similar to William Tell. But he is pretty much only MP. So, he is, like, if he, at most, it's going to be back-to-back. -back. At most, you're going to get a back-to-back -back MP. Uh, for effective, but after that, he's going to fall off dramatically. He can make his own niche. He has a buff cleanse. But damage is going to be an issue because he's a low star. If this kit was on a uh, higher rarity, probably they'd be in uh, B tier. Because, like, you get rewarded for actually removing buffs. But the issue is definitely going to be how, like, if you don't one-shot, you you need to one-shot. Or two-turn uh, two it. You, ha you have to do it. If we get, like, a... Um... A blank Earth mission that's, like, one saber... Uh, we can test this out, but I do think damage is going to be a huge issue. Um, it's just not, it's not worth the investment at that point. Oh, shit. Okay, hang on. I forgot a rash. Well, it's easy. Rash is EX. I don't, I don't have to go through it. Basically, 50 battery in his own kit. Uh, in any multi-core, if you run with Gastoria, it is easy uh, MP spam, and then he cycles in a new buffer. Uh, we don't even have to look at it. Easy X. Nobukatsu. Extremely niche because he buffs Nobu. Specifically, Nobus. Like, other buster units get the benefit, but he is primarily just supposed to die and roid up uh, all the Nobus. Mao Nobu in particular, but all of them get the benefit. Confusion. 
uh, causes skill seal over time, Buster res down, crit stars per turn, crit damage, and it's 100% crit damage for Nobus and 3,000 star weight, which for uh, both Zerk Nobu and Mao Nobu is very much needed. Taunt to himself, MP game when he's taking attacks to either get him to his MP or get him to die. And when he dies, party HP is goes up by 3,000. <laughs> MP charges uh, the party 20% at MP5. Buster up for Nobu allies. Then he kills himself. And then more Buster up based on overcharge. He is so specific to the Nobus. Can't put him anywhere else but niche. And last but not least, Sugitani. Going from one, talking about one person related to Nobu to another. So this is an even more heavy crit focused character. Uh, they do have a kit more or closer to a four star. Uh, Buster up 30%. Crit damage for Buster cards up 50. Debuff full debuff cleanse. Regeneration buff increases crit damage 50% each stack uh, and does it five times. Then and 10 stars per turn. Evasion, three attacks, three turns. Ups the star weight of Buster cards for three turns. And self-regeneration buff that ups the buff success rate. Uh, by 50%, it lasts for three turns, and you get one of these every turn for three turns. The whole uh, way to play Sukitani is you need to be patient. You need the buff success rate to really ramp up her damage. And after the MP, you love lose all buff success rate ups. So you do want to run her with someone that can boost off, up uh, buff success chance. Your Ozymandias, your uh, Prince uh, Lang Ling, just because those will give like get let you get started quicker. Uh, you'll have a good chance to get high damage on the first MP. And then uh, her own skill is going to help her uh, get back up to a higher success chance. And OC, which is, again, why you'd want to at least MP off the first turn. Hearts up and Buster up to get back to the MP and do more damage. I don't think she's extremely niche. She should go in here, but the ease of use just isn't there. She is not, she is ridiculously hard to use. If you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to like using her. Simple fact. All right, two classes done already. And two hours, and then we're taking a break. Uh, either finish this tomorrow, or even maybe later today, depending on how uh, how many uh, servants I actually have to do. If it's more than 20, we're doing this tomorrow. Straight up. Not going past 3 o'clock. All right, Ku. EX. He is so hard to kill as a three-star. Decent gain, uh, gains up here. It counts suffer so much. So, so much. But most of his gain is going to come from him getting hit, to be honest. He gets hit, and then he gets gain. First skill got buffed. One time, uh, five turn guts on a six turn cooldown. Ridiculously good uptime. And the lower his HP, the bigger the attack buff is. Base 20, up to... 50% attack buff. And this was a basic ass battle continuation too. 
Second skill is the most famous protection from arrows. Three attacks, no duration. Increases defense 16%. You put him on a team. Uh, you put him on a team where he's not solo and he's going to thrive. He's not going to die. He's not like an anchor like Herc where you put him in the back because that's where he'll do the best. Uh, like he, he is a cockroach. He'll be by himself because everyone else died. He alone survived. I was going to make an honored one reference, but um, yeah, this guy gets fucked over by everything. Uh, and it's half of it is his fault. He dies too much to even make an honored one joke. And then full cleanse with a 15, uh, 1500 HP. Disengage is a skill that has been buffed quite a lot. Like it's, obviously, it's not the most buffed skill, but half of the units that have disengaged, have, or a little less than half of them, have gone into buff. It might happen in the future. Anti-Berserker, again, nice. And early, early buff for the MP. Reduces defense by 10%. Chance to insta-kill. And, uh... Oh, uh, sure hit. Sorry. Yeah, he, he's just too good at staying alive. He is just really too good at staying alive. Benkei. Skill seal. Taunt to himself. 60% defense. And PCO, but this isn't guaranteed. Removes, removes all enemies' buffs. Chance to stun at all enemies for one turn. 80% chance. And the curse. It, the curse part doesn't matter. He is both a taunter and utility, but you mostly care about the MP. Uh, his taunt is pretty much used to get him hit to get to his MP. Um, but other than that, no, you're probably using him with a K-scope. You're probably using him with a K-scope for an AoE buff strip. And that's pretty much it. The skill seal is specifically so the enemy is not... Oh, wait. Hang on. Just double check if that's AoE or not. If it's not AoE, a bit of an issue. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I would have wanted this to be AoE. Because then all the enemies are going to hit him. Yeah, and he doesn't have, like, an MP gain on this. Like, um... Like, Leonidas does that role of, like, tanking better for a Lancer. Uh, next, two prototype. Similar to OG Ku, but far, far more offensive. You pretty much bring him to fight wild beasts, and there are no archer wild beasts. There are two berserkers. Uh... But that's it. So, not the best niche, especially when it's 100%. Quick up, 20% uh, 20, yeah, 20 for one turn. Defense pierce, this is more useful. Reduces defense uh, for three turns. He only because Wild Beast is so rare. He does not, he's never going to get full class advantage on this. And that's like, except by a mob. It has to be a mob. Uh, and most people are just not paying attention that much to it. So damage on niche would put him in B. But C. Uh, yeah, like if I had other. Um, if I had other uh, levels to this, he would go in C plus. 
um, because he has the potential to go higher. But we're not. I'm not doing pluses or minuses in this. I want to like keep it like not bloated. With a whole like, these are the servants I think are relative to each other. Next, Leonidas. Tank. Absolute tank. Taunt for himself. MP jet up 100% for three turns. Disgusting. This gets him his MP so quickly. Again, like, if you give him time to ramp up, he is, part, like, almost harder to kill than Ku. Uh, guts one time five turns on a six turn this one is stackable with other guts so guts ce's uh being able to give him guts like with paracelsus which you, you do that and then like his gain is through the fucking roof like he like he gets tickled he's gonna get like half his mp back probably party gets the charisma every time his guts procs which is why you'd want to run him with other guts ce's because this part only lasts for three turns. And party buster up 25% three turns. This probably is going to get buffed um, up to like 30 or something. Uh, actually, part, uh, no. If they buff this, they're going to give it a different another effect. I don't think they're going to change the number on this. Like, they might make it 30. I can't, like, but even 25 is more than what AoE buffs are usually. Usually, AoE buffs are 20. Anti Berserker NP. He taunts himself for three turns and ramps up his defense. If you are able, and uh, 25 star bomb, as if you're able to actually loop his MP and he has consistently 90% defense, it is so fucking hard to kill him. And the best part is, you don't have to run him solo, you rather. Other enemies are on the, or other allies are on the field to buff him up. Let him have that uptime. Um, and if you just need him to sit there and tank, he kind of can just do that. Unfortunately, we don't need that in the game right now. I'm putting him in A because. He does he has a job and he does it so goddamn well. But the issue is the game is not in a state where that is like needed. You don't need a tank like this. He sh like he shines when uh like he really shines at like 120 where he like actually has the HP that when he when he's like slowly ramping up, he's not going to get that low HP. Because, like, you don't want him to, like, almost be dead before he even has any of the defense ramped up. Because he doesn't... Unlike who, he doesn't get an attack buff based on how low his HP was. If, like, if... um If Leonidas actually did have that low HP stuff, he, like, I wouldn't be... I would definitely say he... Might stay in A, but, like, he has potential to go up. Next, Roma. Yeah, there isn't much you can save with this character. Uh, 20 battery. Increases uh, offensive buff resistance. 4k heal, which is nice. I'm not going to deny it. This is a nice buff. But it's natural body. Natural body is just... Uh, like they, There's a reason they had to buff it twice. There's a reason they had to buff it twice for Altera. Imperial privilege, but no way to secure it. One time, one turn guts and increases buster performance 30%. No, 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 no. Unless this is being put on Leonidas, I don't see the fucking point. How often is this actually going to be used? 
Especially because this is one turn as well. If this was three turns, it's like, okay, okay I kind of get it. But no. Oh, um, I do, uh, I do want to just bring up, uh, this is the Buster MP. This is the Buster MP with Mighty Chains. You do a Mighty Chain with this and you're like, it is, with Mighty Chains, he got like way easier to actually ramp up. Um, just wanted to like bring that up before I forgot about it. Romulus, ye, you're in D tier. You, yes, you can increase the chance of Imperial Privilege, but that command code does not, like, it makes your odds better. It doesn't guarantee. Like, you need to bring someone for Imperial Privilege. Oh, actually, I didn't even finish going through Romulus. Bias, by the way. Damage to all enemies. Party attack. The scaling is horrible. This MP needs to get buffed. Badly. Badly, it needs to get buffed. Because this is, like, Jolter Lily, <sighs> Jolter Lily has this as one of the effects of her older charge. I still don't like how low the, that effect is, but at least she has other effects with it. It's like, you could use Romulus, or you could just use Jolter Lily and get the same experience. And Jolter, Li Jolter Lily has, like, is more consistent. Like, actually like like i don't want to do it to like gotcha four stars but when i like a welfare basically has this kit and does it better yeah yeah it's it's hard to put up because welfares are pretty much with evocation like you can get them sometimes even easier and faster um because you don't have to do friend point summoning Sometimes you like it is not now with Jolter Lily being in the um evocation shop. It, for a new player, it's a non-zero chance that you'd actually have Jolter Lily at MP5 before Romulus, depending on like if you friend point summon or not. If you don't ever friend point summon, like yeah. Hector. Good tactics buff, MP damage, uh, damage cut, two attacks, three turns. Not the best uh, version of a tactics buff, but it's not the worst. Chance to use gauge, Tanta stun, neither of them are guaranteed. This needs a buff. And disengage, yeah. Skills, not great. NP, pierces defense. And reduces defense. Oh, no. Yeah, like, if you're being carried by, like, one skill that isn't even that good, it, yeah. Because it's, like, it's only defense pierce. Wait, doesn't Prototype Ku have defense pierce, too? Or is that something else? No. No, yeah, defense pierce. I need Hector's AoE buster versus a single target. But yeah, I would I would I would one hundred percent take uh who prototype over Hector. I don't care if it's AoE. Right. Your mood. Slightly better hit counts. Dodge. Defense. Reduce female attack for one turn at like a super high number. But this is so conditional. And then this buff I really do like. I, I think this was a really good buff. Especially from what it was. Star gen up to like just making his most of his kit just feel better. Like he didn't have card buffs before. Even at 20%, this is still gonna he still would feel better.
Yep, removes their buffs. It's after damage. Inflicts curse. It's a useful MP. Unfortunately, it happens after damage. Yeah. He, without that skill buff, he would go here only because, like, he wouldn't go here only because uh, he does have buff removal. Without skill buff here, he's at C. You'd use them for different reasons than a coup prototype. Jaguar Warrior. He got a hell of a buff. It's actually story lock, but for this list, by the way, if you didn't know, this is MP5 for all units, even the story lock. Uh, because like sometimes you just get them without you even knowing or realizing it, based off of like GSS GSSRs or other banners. So Huge reduction in cooldown. This is the big, like, one of the biggest reductions in cooldowns, like, we've seen. They, like, brought this down by three. Guarantees Forest Battlefield for this skill. 30 Star Bomb. Two attacks, evasion. 30% attack for two turns, so monstrous strength. 50% crit damage. 50% star gen. 600% star weight. Solid crit utility. Evasion one turn. Debuff resistance. She's like she's kind of carried by like honestly just being a crit unit. Like the MP is whatever, honestly. It truly is whatever. Like uh she doesn't even do debuffs, right? Yeah, like this debuff resistance like doesn't mean anything she doesn't have like a debuff to put on people like yeah for our allies it's cool but still only support that puts debuffs on people mainline support is scotty jaguar is quick i mean uh scotty jaguar warrior is not quick sorry So, again, this is going in the C, and all all three of these are here for different reasons. Uh, yeah. Niche, uh, buff strip plus assistant, and then crit. Hoseween. So this is one of those characters that you would actually need to grail to see like the most benefit of what his kit can do. Because if his HP is too low, he's just gonna die when some of the kit is just like not functioning at the current moment. Uh, just because we'll see in a second. Triple quick. Star gen, 3% for three turns and sure hit for three turns. 50% quick buff. Uh, mental debuff resistance 100%. Enemy MP seal for one turn and reduces their defense by 20%. 50% attack buff for three turns, 100% crit damage up for three turns, one evasion one time, and Sargent goes up. 100% for three turns at base. I would 100% say that he wants to be soloing and the fact that this is only a one turn buff is probably the biggest hindrance for him. Like, he's if you're going to solo with him, it would be in, against an archer, which is naturally going to hit lower, uh, lower amounts of damage. So he's he'd stay a while alive longer but an issue is he does not have healing in his kit and like it's just gonna be a reef 
fun is going to be an issue because of the lack of card buff. Like with, yeah, like no guts. Yeah, no guts, no healing, and this is only one time. There, he's not fighting casters that can only attack twice. They like just because they're not going to do as much damage doesn't mean they're not going to do damage. He would need to be popping this literally every turn, and the issue is like he might not be refunding enough to even do that. Like. Van Gogh does this better. Obviously, it's five star. But they need to like give him buffs to make him not like exactly like Van Gogh, but maybe give better healing than Van Gogh. Like hell, fucking I would be down for like 4k heal on this and drop the cooldown by one. And I think that actually will do a lot for him. I know that is pretty crazy, but like he he does not have any other way to get gain besides getting hit. And also that if he doesn't get hit, uh, and he gets back to back MPs, he's not he's wasting one of the dodges. Like he he's not getting a new dodge. They do not stack. Oh my god, I love these self buffers. If he gets a good buff, he's going to A. Maybe even higher, but he needs a good buff and he hasn't gotten a buff yet. Oh my god, I'm so fucking hungry now. And I just deleted that. Okay. Okay. Okay, keep going down, Gareth. Decent hit counts. I'm glad I get to talk about this again. Uh, he is tank as well. So her getting hit. And I think she, I believe she gets a bonus to that too. Uh, one second. We're going to go through this real quick before I talk about it. Uh, in terms of the gains. Because I, ha I have used Gareth as a tank before. Out outside of Lost Belt 6. I've used her as a tank outside of Lost Belt 6 before. Guts. One time, three turns. 50% crit damage on a two star, by the way, and 20 stars. 20% battery when she's hit, 20% uh, attack buff for one attack. And this lasts for five turns. Taunt, 40% defense up, increases MP gen, only 20% for one turn. Uh, she is nowhere near as good as a tank as Leonidas. That that is a fact. But she does have better card refund than him. He is basically banking on getting hit to get refund. Gareth does want to do damage, but the issue is this skill. If she's solo and she's getting this massive attack buff, has to attack. There is no option. So, like, in a team, like, she want to be in a team, but then refund does become an issue. Like, she can't take advantage of having better face cards than Leonidas if using her Quaker Arts card is going to take away this buff. I kind of wish, instead of one attack, it would have one buster card, one buster attack. Like, specifically make it buster, so it's not fucking with the refund. I think that would be like, I think people would say that's like a, such a mid buff, but like functionally it changes how we would use this uh, character. Um, ig invul, ignore invul, defense down. Again, I'm not ex I'm not expecting miracles from this. She has like she has potential, but it's again two star. Uh, yeah, it, Jack, it's another jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah, I'm okay with that. All 
snack. I need to go get uh, some kind of snack. Uh, yeah, after Marianne. All right, very modern, modern hit counts. Uh, she's able to be the looper herself and be plug suit support for any like female, specifically arts, uh, female or unknown gender, not really for other class types. Like you could for a quick, but it's only 10% MB gain. It's not like massive. It's not what quick servants need. They need a lot more than just 10%. Arts different because it's an arts buff and MB gain at the same time. 30 star bomb, 500 damage on a four turn. Awesome as a sub DPS or support. Guaranteed drain for all enemies. 10% battery to the party, party crit damage. You could use her as a farmer. That is something she can do. It's just not, it's not the best thing. But as like a sub DPS on a challenge quest, being able to put buff, buff lock is nice. And this arts MP ramp up is just not, it would have been better if it was actual ramp up. But yeah, she's much more of a support or sub DPS. And for her, it's like here. I kind of do want to put her here because the other like low cost supports are three stars. Hang on. Let me just look over this real quick. Yeah, the other looping supports are at least three stars. So it's like she's looping support on a like even tighter budget than normal. Like I would not. Actually, like if you're using like an arts uh, female servant, like you could use these two uh, and support Castor and probably not have an issue whatsoever. Uh, that's definitely though more if you do not have Castoria, because th at that point you're pretty much get just getting Castoria numbers, uh, but you have to use two different units for it. Um, yeah, o like only because she is a uh lower cost than Paracelsus, Asclepius, or Shufu. That that is the only reason she's going to A. Uh, being a cost thing. All right. So we're an hour in, and this list is actually going by so fast. Holy crap. Not talking about hit counts and shit like it's a review. Wow. The time I fucking save on this. All right. I'll be right back. I need to get some kind of food, like, ready. And stretch.
All right, we got set up. And again, if there's any like nasal stuff in the audio, it's because my sinus is messed up or some shit like that. Like my no, I barely been able to like breathe out my nose for a while. All right. Yeah, I am not hating shit right now, chat. I am not hating this. This is going by so fast. I kind of don't care. All right, Peach. Where is Mr. Re Weeb on this going to be? But first, we got to talk about George. He is without a doubt the number one tank in the entire game. I, I don't think anyone is going to contest this. Um, like, he does this job, and he does it so fucking well. You can make him, like, be extra squishy. Um, he's the same cost as Leonidas, but you use him for a very different purpose. He is, like, the, here to set you up to, like... Basically, you're, like, doing some other shit while, like, waiting for him to die. Like, if you are, if it's, like, a really weird node and you're all about efficiency and time isn't a concern, you can just put him on the team and you have the extra turns needed to set up for what you need to do. Like, say a unit doesn't have, like, batteries um, and you need time for them to charge up their MP. You would just put George on. And you have three turns to get what you need done. And he have, even has the guts to help that. Mental debuff resistance, so uh, I can't get charmed, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, or skill sealed. But, like, the issue with the skill... Oh, no, it's confusion, not skill seal. My bad. Another thing about him is, like, and... Most people actually forget he can do this. He can force people to be dragons. He can force the dragon trait to one enemy for three turns. It's not even a one turn thing. So units that have anti-dragon. Like if you want to do like big setup. Like with either Draco, Kremhild, uh, especially Sumanai. Because he has, like, super effective and power mod for dragon. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't think anyone didn't see that coming. But he, What he does, he does so fucking well. And there is zero five stars that can do what he does. He has literally no competition. He has no enemies. All right, let's talk about the pirate. Yeah, this is not tactics. But with it, how low his value is, it might they might as well just buff this like it's a tactics. Cuz yeah, it's AoE 20 MP it would be AoE 20 MP damage and AoE 20 attack. But like this He's a buster unit. Like, come on. 27% attack. Guts one time. No duration. That actually is pretty good. But debuff resistance minus for 50% for three turns. Yeah, that's that hurts. 2k heal uh, for everyone. And then if you're uh, female or feminine looking, another 2k. And feminine looking is usually unknown gender servants, usually, that, like, are female, but there's a reason why they're not being considered female. Um, like, Wanjina has boobs, Tyra has boobs, Nobu has boobs, but especially Nobu, she, uh, second ascension, male. Like, It's either it's either lore is being fucky, or yeah, there there there's some other shit.
damage to all enemies, 10 star bomb, very low chance to drain. I'm going to be honest, like, you would only... Like, Nemo, like, Nemo, if you're in there, I know this is, like, one of your favorite characters, but I don't use him enough to see that much value in this. Like, maybe for multi-core, but this isn't, like, huge values. Like, if you're looking for party MP damage, you're pro like, there are other three stars that have, like, buff tactics. Like, yeah, getting both of these together is nice. But when, like, he doesn't have a battery, like, getting his, getting to his MP is just going to be a pain. And the overcharge doesn't do much, and the effect of the MP isn't that much either. Like, he, he would definitely be someone you invest because you like him, not because of gameplay. Yeah, I, I can't see a reason to use him. Like, especially compared to other units, like even another AoE buster on here. It, yeah, like this placement is more because there is another um, AoE buster rider on this list uh, to compare to. Oh, shit. This started off with, like, without four stars, so I, I just, like, ghosted Medusa. All right, petrify one enemy, bypasses stun resistance, but you don't get sun, stun success rate up. Does not bypass magic resist, but it does uh, bypass stun resist. Monster strength, 30% attack for two turns, 20% battery. MP Gen, 30%. It is so funny that she has anti-saber. Because the most recent version of Medusa is a saber. That actually is hilarious. MP, damage to all enemies, but it's one hit. Reduces crit attack chance, 20%. Star Gen party uh Star Gen goes up 50%. Yeah, like this is an Astolfo situation, but worse. Because the Stolfo you can use for farming. He does like this 20 battery is just too awkward. It's too awkward. Like this again. Is you like the character, but she doesn't, she's not providing anything. There's not much you can swing this besides this petrify. She, do, she doesn't do much for the party except petrify. Trust me, this isn't me hating on Medusa. I really like I warmed up to her after um watching Heaven's Feel. Like especially watching Heaven's Feel. Um Yeah, it's it sucks they haven't buffed her since that MP buff. It really sucks. Especially for how popular it is she is. It took forever for her to get a five star variant when they gave two four stars out in the same fucking singularity and they have not buffed this one in a while. All right, Boudica. I can't even put this servant in extremely niche uh, anymore. I, I don't remember if I didn't put her in there. No, no, no. There is no way. Um, yeah, there's no way. Um, she wouldn't not she wouldn't not have been in like extreme niche. The reason being is damage against Roman enemies. This is a good power mod, but before 
there was no way to secure the Roman debuff. Now there's a command code that does it. And Boudica can be the one wearing it, but most likely it's going to be your DPS. A command code immediately makes it so, like, she has utility. And again, 60%. 60% power mod. 50% crit damage. Like, it's one of those cases where they do a buff or they do um, a quality of life and then they forget about something. Or, like, sorry. Originally, this comes out. All it was is this. If you weren't fighting Roman, the skill didn't do shit. So they gave it crit damage. Now you can make sure someone's Roman. Now she's a universal buffer. Targeted guts, one time five turns. Increases max HP on a uh, six turn cooldown. This has very high uptime. 20% arts for the party. Increases party's defense by 20%. Increases the defense even more and charisma. This is a great low star buffer. Great, great, great. If party cost is going to be an issue for your team, Boudica. But, but the whole caveat is with this is that you need to have a command code. If you do not have the Roman command code, definitely goes probably to B or C. Because, yes, those buffs are really good, but they're not groundbreaking, right? It's crit damage, guts, um, hard buff, attack, and defense. I say, like, that's a lot. But that's like Waver without a small quick uh, card buff. And Waver is free for if you pick them from uh, after Fuyuki. Yeah. I actually, now that I think about it, it's Waver with a card buff and a Guts without any of the charge. Like old version of Waver. If you do not have that command code. So honestly, I'm going to split the difference and put her in B. She should be in A, but not everyone has that command code. As hype as Arcade was, not everyone was playing during it. They really do need to make that, put that command code in the uh, Rare Prism shop. It is too, it's too like, it's an account changing command code, which I don't, I didn't think I'd ever be saying. Like. Their account functions differently if you have it. Ushiwakumaru. This servant is... This servant is robbed of being better because of how dog shit the hit counts are. Scotty can only do so much. She can only do so much. She has gotten so many good buffs, but two hit quick at 0.87. No, she like the best buff they can give this unit. The best buff they can give her is to fix her fucking hit counts because they're not going to do it for the MP. They've done it before for um, some units. They have changed hit counts. Especially with um, Ushi being in Melty Blood, she should have better hit counts. She is a very, very popular servant. And I, I truly stand. She looks better with a shirt on than bare chested like this. She looks older. She looks older when uh, she has the Chinese version of this uh, sprite. All right, rent over. Party MP Gen, 20%. Quick up, 20%. 20% uh, 
20% attack, 50% crit damage for uh, three turns, 20 star bomb. Dodge, 100% charge on for a turn. Yeah, and like the reason I'm bringing up the quick card, how low the hits were before, is because her MP is only one hit. How is she genning stars? She is, like, she is heavily, heavily reliant on MP spam when she can't gen MP to be able to spam her MP. Like, yes, if you have raw batteries, it fixes a lot of issues, but it's... Like, you could solve most problems in the game by having more uh, batteries. That's what command seals are for. Does have writing uh, A+, plus, which is a good passive for her. B, held back by our fucking face cards. Uh, one sec. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna have to sneeze soon. All right, power through it. <laughs> Never mind. All right, Iskander or Young Alexander or. Have that reverse, Young Iskander or Alexander. This character could be more. It could be more. I do think they're in a be much better place than Kid Gilgamesh because Kid Gil tries to be Gilgamesh too much. This one is his own character than Iskander. 16% attack for the party. This needs to get buffed. Charm Humanoid. Uh, enemies removes their buffs huge huge like charm and buff strip like they're gonna take more damage and and uh, or do less damage and like you they can't move 20 percent quick up to the party for three turns I like this character could be a lot better. They need to buff him as a support. I would rate him more as a support than DPS because this is not enough either. Again, one hit AOE quick. You're not looping this shit. This is a support. And I deleted Ryder. Okay. He needs his skills buffed. He's a support that has like one really good skill and two that are mid. Very mid. At least the quick buff is 20% and not a weird number. All right. Next, we're talking about Columbus. He can actually do buster farming. It is possible to do it with him. Uh, the issue is 100% going to be, do you have the serving coins to be able to do it without K-Scope? Decent hit counts, by the way. Like, he can, he, like, he is built more modern than the last couple. Voyager of the Storm, worse than, uh, worse than, uh, Blackbeards. It's whatever, though. Um, like all of the, all of them are like this, but, uh, Blackbeard, he didn't have anything else to like do it for himself or help other people get to their MPs. So th that's why I was harsher on it for him. One time three turn guts, 30% battery. Yeah. So like, no matter what you need K scope, there is no avoiding it. You need K scope. You cannot use uh 50% CE. So even if you have the server coins, doesn't matter because he cannot get this back. 20% buster, 15 stars. At least he can double stack something with Fitch. Okay. 
there. So even getting the servant coins don't even matter. Damage all enemies, reduce crit attack chance by 50% for three turns. It sucks that you cannot use that in farming because that is such a good utility, but most of his utility would just be... It would be farming. Or... I'm sorry. Yeah. He can do farming. It's just like Liz, like Caster Liz, he's not going to be good at it. Uh, I think the damage is actually here. Yeah. Oh, wait. At least they at least they at least say it's MP5 Columbus. God damn. God damn Europa. You're beaten out by a three star with super scope. On fucking fortunate. Yeah. Uh yeah. Until you get a better Buster Farmer, a uh, better Rider Buster Farmer, like he can, he can do the job for a good while. No, he's definitely not worth going into EX. That's for damn sure. All right, next uh, we have Lu Bu. I don't know why it says red hair, but this guy is Lu Bu. Uh. Good, uh, opposite problem of Ushi. Like, actually has good quick cards, um, but none of the bells and whistles that Ushi gets. But he actually does need them. So a lot of it. Oh shit. Mm, ah, my knee just hit the desk. Ah, ha, oh my god, fucking hurts. Ah, oh, it hurts more because I messed up my knees yesterday working out. It was it, like doing squats. Oh my fucking god. Hang on. Fucking god. I actually found this bio freeze shit. I'll put it on later. Damn it. I swear I'm not making up excuses, chat. Hang on. <laughs> All right. I want to finish fire so I can actually eat something. And we're almost halfway done. So a lot of his skills, three attacks, five turns on five turn cooldowns. So if you need time to set up, you have all the fucking time in the world. But, but you have to remember, like you cannot click cards willy nilly with him. You cannot just click cards. You need to, like, it's basically like Sugatani, but <sighs> less forgiving Sugatani, because you can use this shit up so quickly if you're not careful. Chance base star weight, six hundred percent. Chance to ignore invincibility. And guaranteed dodge for one turn. Actually, like, what is... Yeah, there's no change with the skills. They just called it different things. All right. And, yeah, crit damage, three attacks, five turns. Three attacks, five turns. It is too easy to just, like, burn out all his buffs in, like, a single turn. Like, it is... Not the crit damage, but literally everything else can be burned in a single fucking turn. Quick up EX, nice. Four hit AoE uh, MP. Ignores defense buffs, skill seals. 
he cannot farm, at least not traditional farming. Uh, and like going with that, if he does not kill, you're fucked. Because you cannot, you cannot do quick hard follow ups if you're trying to make this guy farm. Also, 0.57. You know who else has this gain? You know who else has this gain? Say Shonagon. You know who else has a four hit AoE MP? Say Shonagon. He would, his numbers for looping would only be better than Say's because he's fighting casters. He has nothing in his kit to actually help him with looping. So you're really stretching it if you try to make him farm. Like, really stretching it. You have to be, like, bored as shit. But, I mean, this is Lubu, so I, can, I, I see why people would do this. Yeah. This guy... This guy needs buffs. Lubu needs buffs. Adly. Like it, it's just the fact that you can literally use up everything in a single turn. And then he is solely reliant on his supports for keeping up the damage. I I think this five uh I think this concept was cool. Three attacks, five turns. Like it's a hundred percent uptime. But if you're not patient and you're not taking your time, he is gonna like drop off um from what he could be doing. Like, it, it gets to the point that why are you using this when you could be using a, a servant that would be having other buffs up too? Uh Bart. Little weaker hit counts, but not atrocious. Again, Voyager of the Swarms, but a better version of it. The closer it gets to 20, the better. But I don't think they're ever going to be buffing Voyager of the Storm. Uh, this skill has never been buffed. In its entirety. Like, no servant has ever had this skill buffed. And, like... Yeah, like, some of them definitely need it. But at the same, like, out of all of them, I think Nemo needs it the most because this is way too conditional. Uh, buff, reduces star weight, crit damage for the party, 50%, and 10% battery for the entire party, all along with the skill cooldown being reduced from what it was, and this is what it used to be. 20% quick up, crit ch chance down, 20 stars. Anti-Berserker, damage to all enemies, reduces their defense by 20% for three turns. And this is the thing that completely and utterly stops him from going anywhere beyond C. His super effective damage is against bronze enemies. That is the most useless shit I have ever fucking seen. He is saved by his kit up here. But what the fuck? You have an easier time killing the most basic fucking Trash mobs. Why? Why? What is the purpose of this? Please explain. Like, it was good up until this point. It's a six hit AoE quick. I actually could have said, like, good things about it. Like, this actually... 0.65, he actually had, like, good potential to be a farmer. It's like this, what the fuck? You completely gimp any reason anyone would want to use him for, like, farming. Um, yeah, like, give me a second. Tycho. Let me bring up Tycho Bell, because he has a six set, too. Like, he has better gains than Tycho. 
he would have better refund than Tycho. Yeah, like they actually average out to be around the same. 20%, uh, 24%, 26%. Tycho loops, yeah, they loop pretty much about the same. But who the fuck is going to use a, a servant just because they kill trash mobs easier like this? And only trash mobs. Like, it's one thing if they gave him, like, another super effective damage on top of this. Please. Because that's what he needs to fix the MP. He needs to be able to do... He needs another super effective. And it, like, before you say, oh, that makes him, like, too fucking OP. Who the fuck needs extra damage against killing, like... Trash mobs or like low star servants. Like, unless there's a CQ that there are a bunch of actual low stars you need to kill, like low star servants that have like so fucking ridiculous HP. Oh, case in point Bart on uh, blank earth. If there was a caster enemy then this has value because that's a free super effective niche but there is this unit came out years ago and there's no content in the game where you'd want this where you would need this most by the time you even get him like max leveled if you choose to do that you're probably already past this point you're probably like a lot stronger that you don't need it you pro like you might already be past um, Lost Belt 6 and you have Habitrot. Like, then you really don't fucking need this. Potential needs buff. Could be better. All right, last one, and then I get to eat food. So, slight break. Oh, yeah, 100. Okay, yeah, no, 100%. This is getting done today. We have 42 uh, servants here. 41, really. Mendricardo. Now, every issue I have with Ushi is mid like, does not apply to Mandricardo, especially with his buff. Before I said, like in my um new player guide, that it was between Mandricardo and Ushi, and that was before Mandricardo got his uh buff. And I said straight up, Ushi isn't higher because um their hit counts are dog shit. I said that um last year. Mandricardo gets all the bells and whistles. He's gonna just. He's going to be getting better as time goes on. Ushi came out too early. They gave her a bad kit, and they need to keep giving her buffs to keep up. Magicardo, they gave his kit a flaw, and then they fixed the flaw. So 0.86 again, and the sick counts, he looks like a year one servant. Like, he looks like year one's, uh, yeah, year one hit counts, but just better for face cards. And also for an art servant, having like lower quality arts cards doesn't matter as much because Castoria lull. You can get more charge. Defense, uh, thirty percent defense. Party attack goes up twenty percent. The buff version of this skill, because if you didn't know why this skill, like why he needed this buff, it's because. It says all this stuff for one turn, but the second you hit hit the enemy, Mendricardo's dead. He dies. Now he gets all of these buffs. 50% attack for one turn. Crit damage for one turn. 100%. Uh, he removes uh, buffs from enemies when he's attacking them, but this is after damage. So buff strip for uh, what enemies can hide behind. And then he'll kill himself after the turn ends. He can cycle himself out. And yeah. 
you could actually take advantage of this shit. Before, if they had like an invul, he'd just be stripping their buffs and you wouldn't get any of the damage. None of this you'd be able to use. Now he actually gets a full turn to pop off. 20% arts and quick buff and a taunt to help get his MP. Single target for hit arts and rainbow buff. So now I can actually talk about Yui because an MP like this makes her stronger or it makes her able to actually buff him up and give him more damage before he uses his bring, his bring shot. Him having a rainbow buff as a three star, big boon, and is why Ushi is on a different tier than him now. Change of the meta did imp impact placements for these two. All right. Uh, three more. All right. Done with riders. Let's move on to casters. All right. First one, Medea. Oh, how they fucking treated her disgusting. This this is like actual crimes. 150 battery. 2.5k HP heal. Targeted cleanse with 50% MB gen or only one turn. Her MP has AOE scaling as a single target. And 20 battery afterwards. I can scale up to 100 with overcharge. Oh, sorry. I don't know why they did her this dirty. But, yeah. Her big thing is that she... Do, removes buffs and she doesn't need a CE. She can do it starting from zero. Doesn't matter the CE. And she could do it like not only that, she could do it at level one. Like you can have an esports uh Medea that is just there to remove buffs. I can't put her in anywhere but niche right now because that's all she has going for her. Just being able to start from any anything. She can do use any CE and be able to do that. And because it's 150, if you're able to get higher overcharge, she it's easier to keep doing it. Next, Gilles de Ray. Debuff success rate. Um, or mental debuff success rate and mental debuff resistance. The resistance is 100%, so he almost can't be charmed or any of that. Almost, because, like, like, comma does res down. It, like, it's the uh, additive multiplication. Mul uh, multiplicative. Uh, additive, subtractive. Sorry. Holy shit. I thought I would be feeling better after I ate. No. No, no, no. I don't get it. All right. Next. This skill got buffed last year, I believe. All enemies MP damage down. Arts res down. Buster res down. Like, yeah. So even outside the foreigner stuff he does, he still does have utility. Like, res down ain't nothing to scoff at. You don't see it too, too often. Terror on a terrible cooldown. The buffed MP is a 30 fucking battery for all foreigners. 30 battery. So, yeah, like, very, very, very specific 
or foreigners and I could only see this happen like being useful in multi-core with one of the single target foreigners. I can't see this being used in like Van Gogh comps because Van Gogh does not need the help getting their gauge uh getting her gauge back. He does not need the help. Um defense down two. Yeah, like it would be better if this was just flat out debuff success rate. Hopefully, if they buff this skill, they just make it debuff success rate would work better for this stuff. And landing this, yeah, just in general, he needs this to go buff for just general debuff success rate. Um, I don't think he is super niche. I I genuinely don't think he's super niche because the foreigner thing is just something they recently added. Um, definitely not a farmer. Mostly a multi-core. B. He 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 does have a good purpose a purpose and is functional. <clears throat> Anderson. This got skill got crazy buffed. It is flat 50 now. Yeah, like this is what it was before. It was 40. Now it's 50. And depending on alignment, you get different buffs. <clears throat> and if you put traits. <clears throat> yeah, so summer, insane, and bride get this. But if you put traits like um like what uh Jacques does, what uh Moriarty does, you can get two of these effects. As long as they're not already evil. <clears throat> so 50% star gen, 20% MP gen, 20% MP damage, and 20% crit damage. <clears throat> Damn. 75% battery. This is super fucking annoying because he'd be able to start with zero if he had just a little more. Like, uh, why? You need charge from some outside source. And it could be so it could be as low as 10%. But you do need charge from another source. Also, this is like. Because of how wonky the scaling is to begin with, like you can honestly just leave this at night nine and not worry about it. Third skill, 15 stars per turn, and 10 gauge per turn. This is nice and challenge quests. Um Yeah, his MP. Um the reason this is chance based because it, it's yeah, can't English. It's his personality. He does this when he feels like it. If he feels like it, he'll get he'll write a good story for you. But chance for 20% attack, 20% defense, 20% sergeant, and the heal is guaranteed. Numbers go way higher with overcharge, like decent scaling. A. Definitely A, especially for harder, harder stuff. Out of all these low stars, he's probably the one you'll see the most. Uh, Mozart kind of lost his role due to uh, bitch being a thing. Like stars on demand are just so common now. Shakespeare. Shows up in a lot of events. Nowhere near as good as Anderson. AoE Buster, 40% for one turn. Invul for a turn. and 1.5 heal. Targeted 20 battery. That doesn't care about uh, skill level and ups their star gen by a hundred up to a hundred percent for one turn. The fact that it's a uh, flat 20 is a good thing, that is very nice. MP sucks, this MP is so shit. Yeah, it's just shit. 
Technically, you could double Oberon farm with him, but why the fuck would you do that? Yeah, I guess he's functional. He's functional, but he's not good. All right, Mephesta feels. Chance for drain. Bad. Nine stars per turn, 30% attack, and healing received down 50%. This is a very rare buff, and depending on who you're fighting, this might fuck up their entire gameplay. If, they're, if the whole strategy for the encounter is this thing heals so quickly you cannot do enough damage, this is completely the no you to that. He, he is definitely the no you to any boss that is healing for absolutely no fucking reason. And then to add on to that, buff block three times to an enemy. This is going to last a long time if the enemy is not coded to, if not buffed, buff. Like, it needs that specific coding. Otherwise, this is going to last you a good couple turns. And you're not going to take any, like, you're not going to take more damage than you need to. MP ignores defense and inflicts curse. It, it, you're, it's these two skills you're even using them for. So, niche. Same as last year, if I'm remembering right. Boats are. He has really, like I said earlier, he has really gone down in value because of how uh, free stars are uh, whenever you need them. <clears throat> AoE uh, arts up 40%, 44%, sorry. MP damage is down 18%. Arts is down 20, crit attack chance down 20 for three turns. And 50 star bomb. Like Anderson chance base. Uh, so chance to reduce attack down. Chance to run, uh, get defense down and curse damage. Honestly, you're probably not even ever going to see this MP. Rarely ever are you ever going to get to this MP. And unfortunately, he, like, his use got, like, is now what Oberon does. What Oberon does now is what Mozart used to do. Um, Like, big damage for the final turn, dropping a star bomb. Yeah. Literally what Oberon does now. That's not, that doesn't mean he's going to be ranked lower for that. Like, act, like, genuinely, that is at least. B, maybe A. Mm. I think A is fair still. Yeah, I think A is still fair. Just because, like, so, like so, there are cases you don't want Oberon. 100% there are cases you do not want Oberon. Or he, or he will actually fuck you up. And you'll just pick Mozart instead. Who caster? Um, no, hang on. This is instant EX. He can Buster Farm. He can Black Rail Buster Farm. With you only needing, yeah, yeah. He can Black Rail Buster Farm. As long as you have a unit, uh, hang on. Let me, let me phrase this right. As long as you have a unit that can give AoE 20, he can bust your farm with Atlas. You do you just need friend bitch. Like that is fucking mind blowing. Uh, uh units, especially a three stars kit, is so fucking goaded that you don't need even need a full setup. And he out damages 
five stars in his normal setup. Bad news is you can only use him in farming, but that it's not a slight against a unit if you can only use them in one place. <clears throat> it just depends on how common that place is. But going through this kit, 30% battery, 50% crit damage, and debuff resistance, 50%. Protection from arrows, even better than the other coup. Three attacks, no expiration. 18% defense. And then the crazy skill. Full cleanse. Covers HP. 30% attack buff. And all this nonsense. Basically, he is going to die at the end of the turn. Or he gets a guts, and he is going to die at the end of the turn. When, he when the guts procs, he gets an 80% battery. And that's how you use him. You are just spamming this as much as you can. MP, Buster will ramp up 20% for three turns. Reduces their defense and burn if you're doing, I don't know, Honey Lake shit. Um, the burn is after damage anyway, so you'd still need to face card with a command code if you wanted to take advantage of that. That's why you just use Black Row. It's just easier. Yeah, easy, easy X. Paracelsus, also easy EX, or actually, no, A, A. Before Shufu, he would have been EX, but Shufu is straight up just better. But I'm not going to deny Paracelsus has other utility, and it's mostly like multi-core stuff. So 80% battery. Nice. If you get unlock mana loading, that is just 100% battery. You can just immediately MP and wave clear, which is kind of what he's supposed to be doing. Um, is that it's definitely more multi core, uh, and he just wave clears assassins or berserkers. Uh, so your other whatever unit, it, it could be AOE too. Like he, unlike other units that like. He's an AoE that would be used with other AoEs, just how his kit works. As long as they don't have ramp up, there's really no issue. Um, yeah, no. Sorry. 20% 20 20 arts buff for the party helps with uh, setups where you need to actually do face cards for stuff, especially when you're like doing a whole lot of different uh, long-term investions investments at once. You're leveling Bond. You're leveling Mystic Code. Uh, you're bo what else? Um, yeah, Bond, Mystic Code, Master XP. When you're leveling a whole bunch of things at, up at once, and like party cost really is a huge restriction. Um, use you uh use this to just help uh units that don't have ramp up like Jarcher get like be able to do uh just loop t twice without having to use double cast for you. It is it's most like all of this is like you have to actually know what you're doing though to know like are you actually gonna hit any break break points by uh face carding and i have videos of this uh farming with like nero bride it's all the same shit third skill guts and incre increases their mp gain by 50 percent. now this this is the type of mp gain that quick servants need they need 50 percent, and then they're they usually don't have any more problems looping issue is paracelsus doesn't come with a battery to really be a better quick support. Like if this was a quick buff, so much better for quick units. Like he would be the quick um one of the quick supports people would need. So just a a quick version of Paracelsus that has a targeted battery is just desirable. So fucking desirable. Or they just buff Scotty's uh third skill. Please buff Scotty's third skill. MP, AoE arts, attack down. 
It's just to wave clear. You don't like, and sometimes you just want to get them weak, so you get more hits of overkill on the other MP. So yeah, I feel A, because he's not the best, but he can just do a lot of different. He has many different roles, but he's not the best at a lot of them. So. Babbage. This guy is literally like only missing a battery, but, and then he could do like farming. Like I'm pretty sure I saw his damage like actually isn't that bad. Yeah, 40% attack. MP gain. MP damage for three turns. Yeah, holy shit. Crit up 100%. Holy shit. Yeah, no, 30 star bombs? 30 star bombs? Like this guy is literally only missing a battery. I could definitely see them like, like with Vich, he's double stacking like good shit. Like he really, he's just one of the units. Like if you use him with Summer Chloe, fixes a lot of the issues, or like he's able to do farming because he he really is just missing battery. Like I, it would be on this skill. Yeah, this this is actually just good shit. It really sucks he doesn't have a battery for Vich. Um, All right. Yeah, MP, AoE, no normal effect, reduces defense, low scaling. His weakness is his MP. The worst part of his kit is his MP and lack of battery. But as a crit, but that's not farmer. It's crit. I'm ranking him as a crit unit. Star weight and crit damage. Crit, uh, crit unit. And at that, he at least can do decent. Geronimo. At the very least, Yui makes all this better, but you still have to pop all that shit in one turn to even, or you have, you have to at least pop these two to get the benefits, and then you pop this another turn. But my fucking god, all the rework buff, I don't fucking care. He needs these skills fixed. His MP is one hit. There's no way he's a farmer. And he's just, he has to be carried by his supports. He has to be carried by the supports. I, I almost want to put him in don't use, but because of Yui, I'm just going to put him in D. Like, Yui does clean up. A good amount and it does make his MP actually hit fairly hard, but you can say that about almost anything. Uh yeah. Next Avisabron. So much 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 like Anderson, I'm per like you need mana loading and you need this mixed out. And I think I still think you don't hit, you're not able to MP on turn one. This is annoyingly frustrating. Like, why this number specifically? Like, 30% arts, 30% buster. It counts okay. We're like we're into Lost Belt Saga, so I'll talk about uh hit counts for these units. Like it just makes me depressed talking about uh the hit counts for like year one servants. And this on death activate buff when defeated invo uh for N attacks three turns. You need this skill maxed out to get three. Uh other, like if you're not hitting mm -hmm. ten, there's no point for you to level this skill. Yes, the heal, but the heal is, like, negligible. 
like it, it's good for leveling. Like this is the skill. Like only worry about getting to ten if you have the mats for it. Otherwise, you can keep it at like four. These like these two need to be leveled. This one not so much. Next, MP has been buff, damage to all enemies, no normal effect, increases MP damage, increases party MP gen for three turns. It's low at 10%. But so I think he goes next to Babbage because they're kind of similar in the same, like, like Babbage focused more on crit he can kind of farm uh but you, it's not standard and i think if you actually want to three turn you're going to need summer chloe um he might actually be able to black rail loop it literally all depends on if you have these maxed out is he at 99 or is he able to mp that's literally where the issue stems, and I don't exactly have the mats, nor do I want to actually do that right now. Maybe in a future one, uh, I'll be able to tell that, yeah, Summer of Chloe really does just help out a whole lot. Um, and at the very least, he can double stack this. Sclapius, um, 100%, he is going in EX. And it, because he does, like, he is just such a good challenge quest uh, support. Along with also being a good uh, looping support. So, 5k heal to one ally increases their debuff resistance by 50% on a 5 turn. As long as you can stay alive, like you can use this a fair bit and just stop a whole lot of shit for from sticking to your DPS. Seals one enemy's MP for one turn. Increases party's MP gen rate by 30% for three turns. 20% battery for the party and a full debuff cleanse to the entire party. Damn. Like one, two, three challenge quests that also have like I mean, this doesn't have farming utility, but these two are challenge quests while also having farming effects. Decent passives. And yeah, MP. Guts to everyone but him at 3k at MP5. Heal per turn. Base 1000 goes up to 3000 and debuff immunity one time three turns. Yeah, if you're in a comp where there's a whole lot of charges being around, like you're putting him in a party with like Tomo, it's very hard to actually kill. Uh, especially if you get like rail him and just give him more HP, like he is a lot harder to put down if uh, the cooldowns get reduced a lot. Because like he might not have a guts, but he can pretty much heal himself. As lo like as long as he doesn't get one shot, he probably can come back from the brink. Um, between him and Asclepius and Paracelsus, I do think for units with ramp up, Asclepius is just better as a farming support. Uh, just because the battery and the MP gain are a lot. Or the battery with the MP gain is very, very nice. Uh, and it also helps with uh, other, like your other support to be able to pop their MP. Gong. He is extremely niche because he scales with how good your fucking account is. He is without a doubt uh, the most... Like out of all these low stars, he's the one most you'd most likely 120. Because 
unlike other units, the better, the more of a whale you are, the better this free unit is, which is usually the opposite. But no. They purposely gave him low MP gain because they knew how stupid farming with him would be. If Ku Caster is very cost efficient, Chen Gong is fuck the cost. We're going to blow shit up. And for a lot of people, that that is really, really fun. But I don't like using multiple five stars to that would be farming to help a whole lot of units. And use them all just to charge a low star like this. Like, I'll do it for content, but I'm not going to actively be farming with him. Taunt to one enemy or taunt to one ally and reduces crit attack chance. Increases defense for the party. Damage cut as well. 24% and 350 respectively and 10% uh, gauge to the party. And 50% buster up. If the ally is a berserker, crit damage 100% for uh, one turn. Max HP up 3,000 for one turn. This territory creation does help with his refund, is not by a lot. Okay. So, how this works you do extra hits if you have overcharge. So like Castoria MP, you want to pop it before the MPs. Yeah, I, I wanted to just double check it because they had to put this as a note. You, the more higher your overcharge, the more gain you get from this MP. Like, it is easier to loop if you get overcharge. However, that oh, I believe that only applies... Yes. That only applies if you don't kill in the initial... Uh, for the initial part of um, the MP. If you do not kill in the regular MP, it's only four hits. All right, if you kill in the regular MP, it's only four hits per enemy. But if you don't kill and you have, I believe it's over, overcharged two, uh, you get eight hits and eight hit AOE arts. That is why his gain is 0. 0.4 because he would have like real, like he would be able to just spam overcharge for this MP if it was higher. It would, like, he wouldn't need as many charging supports to, like, make his farming work the way it does if this number was higher. He has to go in extremely niche simply because if you do not have meta supports on your account, you cannot use him in farming like that. You can kind of do it but you are brute forcing the shit out of it and it's not going to be clean. And last on this list, Changju. I believe that's the pronunciation. Changju. Uh or wait, Shangjiao? Shangjiao? Uh, yeah. He seems to count arts and, uh, AOE to the party. Quicken arts up. 20% for three turns. Target the star weight and crit damage. Crit damage is 100% and star weight is 200%. And a full cleanse. 50% battery and then a chance to change the battlefield. Forest, water side, sunlight, burning. It is fortunate that there is a command code that can up your success rate by 20%, but 
it would have to already be turn two for that to even work. Um, but this is battlefield support for people like Nemo uh, and other units that need a battlefield. Like Gwen needs the sunlight. Burning battlefields for like Nobu. So yeah, there is a reason to use this unit, but it really depends on the situation and like, are you like, does this like, is the unit already able to do it? Like, uh, like bringing him for sunlight. It's kind of useless for Ozzy Mandius because Ozzy already brings the sun. He can already do that, but I mean, turn he has to MP first. So like turn one, if you're not in a sunlight field with Ozzy, you have to MP first before. Uh, the charisma actually gets the other effects, so you still have to pop the charisma turn one anyway, and then double uh bitch cooldown reduction. You you pop it again the next turn. Uh, but if you already have sunlight with uh Shang Zhao, hey, you can pop. You get to double stack uh the buff part of Ozzy's charisma. His MP five hit AOE quick, and oh shit, what the fuck. Weird, like I'm hearing a echoing in my ear. Um, based on what battlefield you're on, you get different effects for the MP. Quick res down for forest, arch res for water side, buster res for sunlight, and crit damage, uh, crit attack chance down on burning. And again, you don't need the battery to do this. Like it kind of just if you're on the field. Um, like if you're already on that field, you don't have to worry. You will already have this. So his best case is for him doing the farming, his best case is being on forest. MP damage overcharge. And it's AoE quick five hit. It he's fighting assassins. It's a really weird place. Assassins give like some of the worst gain. And like he might be like just short because of it. I think his like actual utility would be niche because not many units need some uh new battlefields. If you're using it for himself, a little different, but you still have to manage the if you're not on forest, he's missing out on a lot on refund. Yeah. Like him actually refunding works well only if he gets forest. If he does not get forest, like his battery doesn't work, or he's not like actually fighting on a forest battlefield the refund's going to suffer a lot. And it is it is a good thing, though, that all those effects happen before damage. Phantom, extremely niche, and I will, I will die on that hill. Oh, okay. it's out of order, but I kind of just want to talk about Phantom first. I really just want to talk about Phantom first. Okay, skill. This needs to be buffed. Nine stars per turn. Reduces defense uh, by 14%. Charm one enemy. It used to be female or Canis. Like, they had to go back and change this. And then when Canis came out, like, lost about five, I believe. Wait. Anniversary. Yeah, no loss. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like before, he got this buff. They had to change the skill so that it actually affected Canis. Um, chance of charm, and then remove their buffs. Like a decent charm chance as well. Mental buff success rate, and debuff success rate. Uh, resistance. You need to pop this skill first before you pop this, because this pretty much guarantees that this charm is gonna land. You have enough that it fights off magic resist. And if you don't feel you have enough, the MP drops debuff resistance for six turns by 50%. Do you see this fucking combination and how like disgusting this actually is? Like, this is ridiculous.
Sorry, I just wanted to double check whether this counted as a mental debuff or not, and I don't think it does. But, like, are you going to need it for this long? No. But isn't it so helpful if every single one of your debuff is pretty much guaranteed to land no matter what? Especially for units that need debuffs to stick, otherwise they're screwed. I can't put him in anywhere else but niche. I have used him like he is a challenge quest unit, and when you when you need him, he is a lifesaver. Especially when you're fighting units that have magic resist, uh, like goddess essence, uh, magic resist combo, and the debuff resistance is up in the forties. All right, let's bring it back to the legend, the the regend. The savior of France. He is again, he is held back by the fact that he he's year one. His hit count for his cards, not the best. But hey, at least his MP gain is high. 40% crit damage and turn of evasion. Full cleanse. And every time he hits someone with a quick card. They get quick res down. Along with 15 stars on a four turn cooldown. This cool this uptime is ridiculous. Like you can really, really stack up the quick res down. And if you have any kind of cooldown reduction, uh number one, you have a hundred percent uptime. Number two, for one of the turns, you can put every quick card gets 20% quick res down. So you re like you can actually hit 100% quick res down. Three turns of sure hit. Star gen, 90% for three turns. Star weight, or yeah, star weight, 500% for three turns. Tsubami Gaishi, 20% quick up. For three turns, and you can like as long if you can loop the MP, you can ramp this up. The issue is gonna be his face cards and how well he can refund, but 101.05 gain helps a whole lot. But again, he's hurt. This hurts so much. And 15 stars. So this at least mitigates the low hits on the quick cards because again, low hits on quick cards mean you don't gen as many stars. So he do, he did need the star bomb. He would go higher if he wasn't a one star. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but like going back to it, like even as a, if he was a three star, like his max 120 stats would be closer to a five star, like five star at level 90. So his, like, he's not even compared, can't be, he can't even be compared to five stars because like they will just completely shit on him. Like he has to be compared to four stars at level 80 and those can scale up even higher. Unfortunate. First arm. Unfortunately, this man has fully been power crept uh, because of how available stars are. And yeah. 15 stars and 15 on one turn and 15 stars the next turn. 50% crit damage, three turns. Protection from arrows, but with star gen instead of uh, defense. NP. And it, it actually is pretty cool. It actually is pretty cool if you're in a situation where this matters. Damage to one enemy uh, with an 80% chance to insta-kill. If the insta-kill succeeds, and it, I'm pretty sure it has to be the insta-kill, you cannot just straight up kill them and get this. I don't know why they, I don't 
know why they word it like this. Um, but you get a 20% attack buff and a 50% battery. That honestly is so massive, especially it being 50%. It completely makes up for this being a one-hit MP if you're actually able to pull off the insta-kill. The issue is that, like actually pulling off the insta-kill. Um, yeah, so you'd have to... Oracle 3, always accept. Yeah, okay. Yeah, over, over charge 3. Um, yeah, you're not ever going to be able to do this against servants. But when you're, like, if you're just going for shits and giggles, like, this is, uh, this is just really funny to watch happen. See, because it's it's fun, but it's not practical. I think like Regan is just better. Uh next. Uh Jinke. So the same same exact problem Kojiro has. The literal same exact problem. All right, uh, one second. All right, let's get this finished. We're at three o'clock, but we are almost done. All right, so like Kojiro, low hits on quick cards. Star weight, 200% for three turns, 15 stars. <laughs> Increases damage against king enemies, 50% power mod. And on attack, debuff four or five turns, three turns. Inflex defense down when attacking with quick cards. So different from uh, Kojiro, because uh, Kojiro's res down increases his MP gain. It increases how well he can spam his MP. This is just going to increase how much damage he does. Uh, Jinke does. And 50% star, star gen for three turns. Third skill, 30% quick up for one turn. I feel they're going to buff this and make this all, all this three turns. Uh, and 50% crit damage. It's just going to be a while. Damage to one enemy. Chance to insta-kill him. 20 stars. 50% chance. 20 stars. Yeah. The, the... On the same level as Cursed Arm, at least. I don't think they're that bad, but this is impractical. It's, it's the insta-kill, and I know a lot of assassins have the insta-kill. I get it. But it's part of the reason why most people don't find assassin a good class. Definitely plays into it. Oh, Sanson. 
Sanson, Sanson, Sanson. Unfortunate. Again, dribble quick with low hits. Power mod against Evil Lyman, 60%. Nice power mod. Doesn't need, I don't think this ever needs to get a buff. Target one ally, 3k heal, full cleanse. Useful, but a lot of the units have a full cleanse. There we go. Here's where it sucks. Power mod against humans. You don't fight human bosses. Why the fuck would they ever give him this? Because he's he's not AoE. I get if this was AoE, but he's not a farmer. You do not fight human bosses except in Lost Belt like three. Like, it is so fucking rare. And it's hilarious because Kishtaria counts, but he's a fucking caster. Good fucking luck. Unfortunate. Damage to one enemy. Chance to insta-kill. The defense down is at least good. 30% for three turns. That's good, but even lower insta-kill chance. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, no, D tier. D tier. Matahari. Finally get the taste of shit out of my mouth. Finally get to taste get the taste of shit out of my mouth. Ridiculous gain off quick off her quick cards if she crits. 2.1%. Again, stupidly low gain. You're not trying to get your MP. All you really care about are her skills. 100% star gen for the entire party. And 50% crit damage for the entire party. 100, it, like Usually star gen isn't that good. But at 100% arts cards make stars per hit. So this is like actually a really good number to have on a 2 star. Chance to charm all male enemies. And reduces all enemies' defense 20%. Skill seals enemies' skills for one turn and reduces their defense. Now, the thing about this specifically is that low stars do not have guaranteed skill seal at like off the rip. You have to level it for them, which is why in certain encounters like Gatia, uh, like you can completely neg the whole thing. Where like he who he will wipe your entire party, um, and just have those buff for three turns. If you pop this on him, he can't do shit. MP seal like doesn't stop the activation of the skill; it'll just MP afterwards. If you put skill seal on enemies like that, they they're not gonna even pop it. If especially if it's a one time thing, they only pop it on the first turn. Sorry, rant, but like there is such good utility with this from the fact that it's guaranteed off the rip. MP, chance to charm all enemies, a 60, and reduces their defense. You don't really care about the MP. What like what you really need to care about is 100% star star gen, 50% crit damage, and then 40% defense down with skill seal. And I guess chance to charm, but yeah. She's B. She's at least a B. She is very functional. All right. We are at like 21 servants. Final push. Oh, this is a sad one. This is a sad case. This is the first servant that was able to change their class. Or, no. Wait. Yeah, this is one of the changing servants, like Melison and Ptolemaeus. Unfortunately, this is, like, definitely the prototype. It fucking shows, because, my God, is he not actually functional. The main issue comes from this NP. 
it, this noble phantasm cannot be used while he's in the berserker form. It changes him from assassin to berserker, increases the max HP by 6,000, and heals 100%, along with getting a scaling uh, buster buff permanently. The whole issue with this is that now you have a berserker with lower stats and like, like he can't, no MP. You have to solely rely on face card damage as a berserker. So why not just use a different berserker? Like this is, it's a head ass thing. They should have made it so he could keep popping it. And then he had instant heal and ramp up Buster buff. It would be so cool to have as a servant like that. But let's go through the rest of the skills. 15% attack. And if as hide, it goes up to it's 50. So you have to wait until he MPs before you can pop the skill if you want good uptime. Again, stupid. Fifteen chance percent chance to stun, which means don't pop this skill as the assassin. And then as um, oh sorry, increases stun chance. Sorry, increases the stun chance by fifteen percent for one time. And then uh, as hide, it goes up to one thirty five. So again. Don't pop unless you're a berserker. This one had so much potential. So if you're Jackal, this is an 80% battery, meaning if you have mana loading, you can just immediately go into the berserker form. Great. Meant to be used with Vich. You can do Black Rail, but there's no fucking point because no MP actual damage. So, AKA, meaning you can start from zero. Sorry, I, I, I wouldn't you say start from zero? I default to Black Row. But put on like uh, crit C, uh, CE or something that ups uh, the Berserker form's viability. 15% crit damage for Jekyll, 50% 50, 50 for Hyde. And then two different passes based on what form he is, Madness Enhancement or Star Gen. I'm not going to say he's completely useless, but he like, really should not be using him like this. Too clunky. And then when he's a Berserker, he has no survivability, so he's just going to get gunned down. Uh, like, possibly, like, right after you pop the MP, honestly. If he could pop the MP as a Berserker, game-changing, he go he would jump up to, like, B. Probably B. Hundred faces. They gimped her MP gain because of how many hits it was. And kind of does make sense. Sorry. Kind of does make sense because it's a 15, 13 hit single target. Yeah, that uh, it makes sense why they gimped the gains. Star Gen up 20%, Star Gen up, sorry, MP gain up 20%, Star Gen up 40%. First skill makes our base kit just better. Second skill, chance to do a rainbow buff, 80% gain evasion for a turn. Uh, annoying, but this is where the command code actually comes in, and you could basically guarantee all three color buffs. And then if you do, Yui becomes a better, like, you can use Yui with her. And evasion for one turn. 
4k heal. Do you remove your buffs to heal though? Yeah, not not good. Not not good at all. Holy shit. The potential, but they need to buff the servant. They need to buff her skills so fucking badly. Like they've given Serenity multiple buffs. They've only given uh uh hundred faces like one. And this was fucking This was seven years ago. This was seven years ago. Six, seven years ago. I don't fucking care. Arts res down ramp up. Credit tax chance. They can't. Yeah, they can't create her. So she doesn't need the heal that much because she's not going to take as much damage. Could be, should be B, but because if you're not, if you don't have the command code, like she, or you play her bad, you're going to have a bad experience. Like, especially on JP, if you can't read uh, and you just forget, uh, you're definitely going to have a fucking bad time. Go throw. There we go. Good. A lot of hits on these quick cards. This is what we like to see. Attack down 10% for all enemies and reduces their crit attack chance. Crit attack chance is scales with level. Attack down does not. Evasion for one turn. Sargent up 50% for one turn. And this is targeted. Third skill reduces all enemies' debuff resistance for one turn. 100%. You are like completely neuter all debuff resistance. You're actually able to land all your shit. Reduces your defense 20%. And inflict buff block one time. They no duration or no uh Time duration, they have to they have to waste the skill pop. They have to waste an action to get rid of this. NP damage to all enemies reduces their defense as a normal effect for three turns, 20%, and causes confusion. Five hit AoE quick. He has a functional kit. With, like, no actual demerits. I don't think he's a... He's not a looper. But he he can do what you need him to do. That 100% debuff res down. Like, if you have a character that... Like, you don't want... It, like, you need them to get debuffed immediately. Like, it's part of their skills, not the MP. Um, If it's part of the MP... You would use um, Phantom because, like, after the debuff stick, you kind of don't need that res down. Uh, so, like, for skill activation, you'd go with Kotaro. If it's like, if you need the res down, if it's MP, you'd go Phantom. And I think being able to do it on a skill is just like easier to do. Serenity. Even though she does dot damage, I truly really think she's better than 100 faces. But that, again, is personal preference, but also the kid is just straight up better. So, reduces credit attack chance 20% three turns and guaranteed drain. Second skill puts poison on the enemy and then inflicts them with toxic which increases the uh, poison damage on them by 100%, and 15 Star Bomb. This has stupid, stupid uptime, and you are able to double stack this. 
if you're able to do even crazier cooldown reduction, uh, like you're using her with Tamamo, like you might get three stacks of this on there. But I think if you like when it comes to trying to do a Tamamo, I think they're just not clicking enough cards to the point that you're losing the value of like what this potentially could do. Third skill, insta kill success rate up. Oh, right, insta kill. Okay, yeah, that's why she's probably going the same tier as 100 faces. Uh, yeah, insta kill success rate up 50%. Debuff success rate up 50%. This is so her uh, poison lands. Arts up 30%. And whenever she attacks with an arts card, 1,000 poison damage to the enemy. And this also activates with the MP. So it's hard to do to like truly ramp this up, but you could get some pretty gross poison damage. Like pretty gross. Any kind of amps you have like that you can add to this is only gonna make it better or higher uh, base damage uh, poison dots. Anti-Berserker cool. MP, inflicts poison to one enemy for five turns, 2,000, activates first. Skill seal and MP seal, 40% chance to activate. Insta-kill activates first. And big damage. Yeah, she is 100% not a looper. 100% she's not a looper. Uh... Like, she needs these arts cards to crit to be looping. Like Shiki. Very, yeah, like, very similar uh, gameplay style as Shiki, but putting dots into it, into the mix, too. Yeah, I would honestly put her on the same tier as uh, 100 faces because, like, the dot... Ramp like I think she needs power mod against poison enemies to like elevate her. Like it would, only increasing dot damage is not enough as much as I like dots. Poison is the one that gets the short end of the stick because curse and burn both have CEs that uh them like dealing with the dot like does something. There is nothing for poison so far. Ezo. Ah, yes, yes. This is a modern three star. MP charge 0.79%. Two hits on the arts cards. It's fine. Four hit on quick. Let's go. Increases damage against humanoid enemies for one turn 100% and increases own crit damage by 30% for one turn. Even more crit damage along with a dodge. So we're at 60% in one turn. 500% star weight on a three turn cooldown. I do think they need to buff it and add like one small effect onto this. Like maybe something, even something as small as a heal. Um, I like them to put on because I don't think star weight is worth it alone as a skill. But also, this is a three turn, so they can't really do much for damage because it's not hard to get a three turn cooldown like back pretty quick np four hit a uh, single target increases star gen for three turns extra damage against enemies with man attribute and this is super effective so he has a power mod against most servants in the fucking game and then power super effective against man attribute. Like when it comes to like raw single target damage, especially, especially against um, uh, like riders, eighty eight thousand. Against literally every single man attribute uh, in the entire game.
Like this is far beyond five star. This is five star getting like full like niche damage. This is X. This is X fighting sabers, but unlike X, Izo is getting super effective against riders. Like the only one um Like the only rider that X can come close to Izo is uh made alter and then santa alter those are the only twos that x can hit as hard as Izo. and remember this is level 90 x and Izo is level 70. so he, against man attribute he is literally one of the best assassins to bring definite a be only because the power mod is only one turn. That's what really sucks. It's only one turn. All right, last one, Charlotte, and I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna need a bathroom break. All right. Decent hit counts, nothing too crazy. And skill success rate up 100%. Two attacks, three turns evasion. Ignores invincibility, 30% attack buff, and debuff resistance, 20% for three turns. Uh, this is the most unfortunate part. Very similar to uh, Saber Liz. Uh, the difference is that you would actually want all of these at the same time. There is, except for the crit damage, there is almost no case where, like, you get shafted on this. Um, the only one you actually get shafted is if you can't MP or you don't have arts cards, in which case, why the fuck are you even popping this skill? Uh, the crit damage, definitely situational, but these are three-turn buffs, not... Um, they're three turn, not one turn. If they were one turn, dog shit skill, useless. But no matter what, as long as, yeah, as long as you're not at the end of a card rotation, like it's turn three and you have no arts cards, like that is the, that is when you do not pop the skill because there is a chance um, that, Turn four and five, you don't get arts cards either. And then you get app, like, if you can't refund and get back to your MP, useless pop of the skill. MP removes evasion uh, buff, activates first, ignores defense, and chance to insta kill. Insta kill is after damage. Um, but this is a good combo. I like it. But she's only going into C tier because that third skill is so fucking inconsistent. Like, that drastically affects refund. It, it affects refund too much. Like, the MP damage, cool, but, like, it also affects how well she can actually get back to an MP. All right. Uh, I'm going to the bathroom, and then we'll finish this up. Uh, thought that I wouldn't be done until... Like, a whole lot later. Like, I thought this would be a seven-hour recording. We're getting it done, like, three or four. All right. Yeah, it really helps because I'm... Uh, despite me not liking football, I'm, pro I'm probably going to go watch the Super Bowl t uh, tomorrow night. All right. Lou Boo. And since we're back to year one, pretty much ignoring up here, besides just triple buster, 30% attack. Uh, very much like Fergus, this is probably going to get buff. 25% debuff, uh, but you have to pop this last, or you just don't pop it at all. Because if you pop this skill, you will not get... It's a coin flip whether you get attack buffs or not, or offensive buffs. Don't pop it. 30% MP damage for one turn, 
star weight 3000 percent for one turn like even at, from the gecko they knew how much star weight berserkers actually need party defense down uh 20 percent Defense Pierce MP, 30% chance to stun. Like on honestly, I'm not I'm not feeling this uh Lubu that much. Functional, but not not that good. Let's see. Like only because like Buster Berserker, Red Till You're Dead. He does enough damage, but it's not you're you're turning your brain off. Like we're talking about berserkers. There's only there's only so much insight and discussion you could have about how to use a fucking berserker, especially a low star. It is literally red till you're dead. Spartacus. Now he actually can do farming, but in the same vein as Columbus, where you need this maxed out, you don't need mana loading, but at least you're not you're not forced to do double Oberon. Uh, yeah, but 1.5k heal every turn for five turns on a seven turn, 30% battery with a one turn, five, uh, one time, five turn guts. And the cooldown is on seven. So this is why you can't, uh, you have to start with a K scope if you actually want Spartacus to farm. Third skill, 40% buster up. For one turn. Ignores defense and heals himself. I mean, it... He goes up to B only because it's an AoE Buster Berserker. Like, if you have the tools to make it work, it's not that hard. Like, it's literally only because he can do it and because he's a Berserker. If he was any other class, I would not be, like, putting him up here when, like, his skills are not that good. Like, he wouldn't be ranked... Where the fuck is Columbus? Yeah, like, he's... Very similar farming strats. And technically, he should go above, but we're not, I'm not giving Spartacus that much credit. Uh, Yeah, like, looking at MP damage... I don't think this is going to be that high. Yeah, no. No, 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 no. No, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not jerking Spartacus off that hard. No, thank you. Sterius. He is going in extremely niche because I've seen what you can do with the, this guy. And it's very similar to Leonidas, but in a different way. So he actually has like decent hit counts, like modern hit counts, even though his extra attack sucks. Um, for how something like this would work. Uh yeah. Like especially him solo. It, it, unless like people are dying after, but like you really want him to be able to just keep spamming his MP. I really want him to keep sparing the MP. Monster strength, that's actually three turns, 30%. Uh, this is a version of natural body, so it's probably going to get buffed eventually. 40% uh, defense for three turns, like fucking massive, and 100% offensive uh, debuff resistance. Again, just shrugging off uh, bad shit that happens to him. Star weight. 6,000% and 30% buster up. Uh, yeah, he also, he doesn't have crit damage. So weird that he's getting star weight, but I mean, that star weight is to crit on the arts card more likely than not. Or buster crit in a mighty chain in, in the current meta. Uh, but yeah, not, he doesn't have a buster MP. You pop this, you are going for full buster bro chain red till it's dead. NP reduces all enemies attack for six turns, reduces their attack by 40% for this turn and their defense by 40% for this turn. 20% attack down, 30% defense down. 
you don't even need to like loop this MP back to back turns every other turn, and you are truly eviscerating like what the enemy is doing to you. Like if you can uh, pop this back to back turns, it helps a lot with like just letting this berserker actually be able to stay alive. Uh, because of how his kit works. He functions much better uh, at a higher level. And it's mostly HP uh, to let him stay alive long enough to actually ramp this up. So he is like, it has to be niche because, like, the setup, you need to be fighting the right type of enemy for this. You cannot do this strat against just every enemy because if you can't like start off fast he's just gonna get blitzed down before he can even like start crippling the enemy but yeah six turn durations is nothing to fucking scoff at especially when he doesn't have like got many long lasting buffs caligula very much the fucking same this guy at like high levels is can do some really stupid shit. Same exact hit counts. But yeah, like same, like basically the same exact upstairs as um, Asterius, but more HP. 30% attack for three turns. Defense down 10%. Imperial privilege. He has no way to secure this. If he can secure it, hold. Yeah, he just gets super tanky for a berserker. 50% uh, buster up for one turn. On a three turn cooldown. Let me repeat that 50% buster on a three turn cooldown. If you are using him with Vich, it is so possible to double stack this. NP. Seal all enemy skills or chance to uh, seal all enemy skills. 150% chance at MP5. So pretty much guaranteed. Chance to seal their NP for three turns. Base 70 up to 60 or up to 90. And I'm pretty sure I said defense down 30% for three turns. Uh, yeah, you can straight up ignore mechanics to fights because of this MP. And you don't even need any of this shit. Just slap on a K-scope. If you can do any kind of overcharge, even better, but the scaling isn't great. Or, like, it would have to be overcharge buffs, not trying to go up to, like, 200 300% gain. Because the scaling for this is not great. But yeah, skill seal and MP seal for three fucking turns. Are, are you going to contest that? Do you need this like all the time? Nope. Does this stop like so much bullshit though? Yep. Uh, Like again, bringing up the Gatia example again. Um, skill seal is like guaranteed for Matahari on her third skill. Um, this is a this skill seal is essentially guaranteed on like MP one. Like the extra copies is uh, the extra copies fights off mag resist, but like even when it first came out, it was like this part of the scaling was always there. The only thing this MP buff did was give him defense down to like let him hit harder. But if anything, it's more for setups. Darius. Same upstairs. S same exact deck. Hit counts in even the game is almost identical to the other last few. MP Gen, 45% for three turns. Debuff, cleanse, and heal. Guts, one time, five turns. 
with a six turn cooldown, so very high uptime and 30, 20% buster res down for three turns. MP 10 hit AoE reduces their attack and reduces their defense. I think the base scaling on this is just too fucking low. Like, I don't see, like, he doesn't have a battery. I don't see why he couldn't have gotten like 20% base. Maybe it wasn't even going to be able to get back up, more likely than not. Uh, he does have MP gain, but he would need to crit, and that's probably not happening. Muddy Chains helps, but is going to be the struggle boss. Needs to get one of these two skills buffed, and I'd probably go for Disengage over Golden Roll. Um... Oh, right. Lou is a single target buster. I mean, I still stand by it. Like, his kit is like, it's red till you're dead. And Mori just does it, can do it better than Lou Boo. Because he also does crit. Yeah. No, like, for some reason, I thought he was AoE, but he's single target. Uh, but yeah, Mori does it better. Yeah, and Mori is, like, way cooler about it. Oh, Kyohime. Stalker. Big, big stalker. Super high MP gain. Hit count is dog shit. Absolute dog shit. Defense up 30%. Burn amp 100%. 24% defense down, but a 20% attack buff for the enemy, whoever you put this on. <laughs> ah. Debuff cleanse. Bust her up 30% for one turn. I don't see why it's one turn when she... This is all the offense. Why does she have a three turn buff like value? Deals damage to all enemies. Chance is done for one turn. Inflicts burn 500% or 500 damage. And the stun chance is 50%. Yeah, no. Fuck that shit. No. No, 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 no. Get over there, and you should be here. Forgot to actually place Darius. But yeah, you go here. No. Burn damage too weak. You need power mod on burn. Why the fuck are some of your skills the way they are? Next. Eric the Blood Axe. And again, sorry if this... This one, out of any tier list I've done, feels like I'm just speed running it. Um, again, are you actually going to be using these servants if you have five stars? That's what I thought. It counts. They're different, but not that different. They're pretty much the same uh, value. Um... And you're one, so I don't even know why I'm talking about this. 15% attack down for two turns, and then 30% defense down for two turns. When the fuck did this buff come? Oh my fucking god, no wonder it's dog shit. No wonder it's fucking dog shit. It's the first fucking buffs they sent out. Yeah, these should just straight up be three turns, but I don't want them to waste the buff on it. Sorry. I don't want them to waste the buff on this. He needs more help. Guts one time four turns on a seven turn, then they'll buff the shit out of this. He needs to go one turn, one time five turns and six cooldown. This is a horrendous uptime. Debuff, cleanse, and max HP. What the fuck am I even looking at? 
How do I forget this? I I don't even know what the fuck what what the fuck were they smoking when they made this character? Like his MP like is funny. Don't don't get me wrong, that shit's funny. But what the fuck am I actually looking at? They need to buff they need to buff this MP. Like get rid of this. Ramp up maybe? I don't fucking know. Like this this character feels so fucking direction directionless. I don't want to say don't use because it's still better than Shield Array. It's still better than Jill Duray, but it's not good. So soon. So close. Next, Bunyan. Do not think that Bunyan is going in niche because they're not. He is not going into niche. Can't talk about hit counts. Uh, looks good. Decent average hits. Extra attacks weak, but not. that's not anything you need to worry about. 20% AoE buster buff for the party. 20% crit damage for the party. 2k HP for the party. 20% defense down and healing received 50% for five turns. So I brought up Mephestafield's how, like, he does something like this. Uh, yeah, Bunyan is an esports unit, like an actual esports unit. Um, Mephesta feels you kind of you have to make him die. Bunyan doesn't need help dying. She is a one star berserker. Do not grail her if you want her to actually do this role well. She is fine at the level she is, and you can level her up all the way to 60. It doesn't fucking matter. She's still going to die. She has 6,000 HP. 6,000. She's going to get breathed on and die. And that's the beauty of esports because that's exactly what you want to happen. MP, damage to all enemies, reduce their defense 20%. If you manage to get to the MP, cool. Uh, she is not a unit that actually needs a taunt. She will just die. She'll die without you having to worry about it. And. She provides all this shit to the party. Easy A. Easy A. Could put an EX, but the buff numbers are just a little is too low. Like if the crit damage was 50, I would be more willing to put an EX, but no the numbers are just it's good stuff she does. It's just not the most value. All right, Mori, again, why I put uh, Lubu in C is because of Mori. So this guy is modern as shit, at, le at least in comparison to Lubu. He does not have the full gorilla deck, but with Mighty Chains, I don't think you actually need that that much anymore. Hundred percent crit damage for three turns. Debuff resistance one hundred percent for three turns. But buff success rate down a hundred percent for three turns, and this is treated as a buff. Demerit. Yeah, uh, you pop this like you thought Lubu was bad. You pop this, you're not getting any buffs. You get zero buffs. He like you are like sending him out to go die. This is the cool buff. Auto attack buff for three turns. Increases the, his attack for three turns when he attacks. And reduces his defense. As long as you can keep him alive. Awesome. You can get some stupid uh, attack numbers. Like really a high attack buff. Third skill, 5,000 percent star weight for a turn and when he dies 20 stars are dropped you uh mp wombo combo of ignore invincibility and defense pierce 
along with re reducing defense even further. You send him out to die, and then when he dies, you are ready for the next uh the next wave or the next turn. Be at the very least. Be at the very least. I think he is uh the less developed your account, the harder it is to actually use this guy, though, because you need to be able to keep him alive. You need to have, like, taunt CEs because you can't put uh, invuls or anything actually on him because of that first skill. You're going to need to pop it after you pop all the other kind of buffs you want to give him. But after you pop that third skill, that's it. Yes, like, even his ignore invincibility does not work. Uh, when he pops his that skill. So if you actually need invul pierce, uh you need to give it to him before he pops his first skill. So little clunky and not fully counterintuitive. Uh but you know, the, the numbers speak for itself. Uh and just for context, MP damage chart. Yeah. Uh Lu oh shoot. Lubu is here. Like he hits way harder for MP damage, but A, uh, that's with an MP damage buff. And Mori is also doing crit. And he ramps up. So yeah, like uh Lubu front loads damage. Uh, Mori like ramps up and he like ramps up a lot, a lot of card orangey in though, but it's fun. And yeah, so long. So, another weird servant. Um, this is an example of when getting a power mod goes horribly wrong. She only has a power mod against lawful good at, uh, alignment uh, enemies. So that's servants, and they have to be lawful good. It's not lawful or good. They have to be lawful good. Very annoying. 20% attack buff as well, but a berserker being like you needing to be this conscious of it uh, I wish they put lawful or good. They can buff the skill, but I did, this might be a lore thing, so they might not touch it. Second skill, debuff immunity, one time, three turns. Defense up, 20% for three turns. Invul, one attack, three turns. The weird skill that... It's really fun if you can actually get this off, but this is probably one of the hardest skills to actually get to work because you need seven, seven turns to make this thing work. But in return, you get 100% battery, but how many extra steps are you going for this? Like, truly. Uh, so, recover HP every turn for th seven turns at 1,000. Sorry. Uh, I just want to finish this. I got something on my eye. Dance of Lewdness. Regeneration buff for seven turns. Treat it as a buff, but it's a demerit. You removed your latest defense buff every turn for seven turns. And then you get this buff that gives you the party. Um, Just a reminder, this is a berserker. How the fuck are you going to keep them alive for seven turns like this? You need to be running like George. You need to be running Leonidas. You have to constantly be running people that can just tank. You cannot, like, any kind of, um, okay, this thing stuck in my eye. Any kind of, like, survivability you want to give to her, uh-uh. There's no way you can get rid of this unless someone buff removes you. 
because it's treated as a buff, it has to be like the latest buff, but I think this would go first. So that's not even an option. Damage to all enemies. Inflex curse and evil curse. 200% amp. That ramps up to 400%. This is the biggest fucking curse amp I have ever seen in the game. No one fucking comes close to this. And her base curse damage actually is fairly good. The issue is trying to get uh, to loop with Sloan. That is going to be your issue. Luckily, Art, she's Arts. You can use her with Castoria, but even Castor Castoria is going to have a problem keeping her alive. Castoria is going to have a serious problem keeping her alive because they're going to have to be popping like multiple defensive buffs and using solid defense to like literally eat up losing other buffs like invuls. Because there's no way you're getting um, like a defense. Defensive buff after a Castori MP. Not with the teams you'd be running her with to even do it. The, like, fun concept. And I'm not going to say don't use it all. But you have to be playing around this so much. Like, is 100% battery really that needed like this? Probably not. All right, we are done with Berserkers. Let's fully finish this out. Avengers. Uh, Anger Minu. This is a meme servant. Know this from the start. He is designed to be like the worst servant, but his skill three actually pretty cool. They gave it a really good buff, but you need bond 10 with him to actually get it. Good news about it is uh, when you bond level with him, he is treated as a like four star. So you get St. Quartz instead of getting Alphals as you get past bond six. So you do actually get Quartz. And then his like bond CE actually is like really good for him. So one enemy credit attack chance down 50% for three turns. That like actually a stupidly good uh skill one. Guaranteed drain and reduce attack by 30%. Like he's supposed to be a bad servant, but his skills actually aren't bad. It's his like base stats and shit. His base stats are horrible. But like face cards, like skills, they're not bad. Third skill, quick up. That goes up every turn at uh, level 10, 40% per turn. Guts, one time six turns. Rise with 50% HP, stackable with other guts, including his Bonsi. And his Bonsi gives him cla like full class advantage, at least uh, offensively against beasts, along with having the other guts. So re actually like really nice. Especially for how his kit works. But after five turns, he's going to kill. He's going to die. MP. Oh. So, very similar to Bazette, except um, he does true damage. Based on how much damage he took. Based on his own HP. Yeah. So the reason this doesn't do damage isn't because... Um, uh, yeah. It's not because, like, the enemies naturally do less damage. It's because you cannot have enough HP for this to fucking matter. The way it's calculated is... Yeah, like, and it can't be blocked. 
Um, and unlike other MPs, if there's no enemies on the field, this will actually will be activated. Um, yeah, so you pop the MP, any day, like, and the HP you have at the start of it, minus the HP you have when you're out of the state. He does not have that much HP. The absolute most you can do with this is like at level whatever fucking 65. It's only going to be like 20 something thousand damage. Like black rail. Sure. It will like, like all other like damage sources, like gets calc with this shit. I don't I don't even know if this is actually even gonna say it on here. No, it is not. Because there's it's too hard to actually calc. If you want to do more damage with Anger Manu, you have to grail him. And it's more of a flex. The HP here heal here is so that like He's not going to immediately die because you pop the MP while you have like no HP. There's no way you're going to do that much damage. You need this heal. And that also makes it a bigger problem. The more you grail it and the more damage he can take, the less likely this uh, heal is going, like especially a thousand, the less likely this is actually going to be enough to change anything. D. He's still more useful than Shield Array, but you're not going to be doing much MP damage. Next, Salieri. This guy actually can, like, Arts Farm. And I think he actually does it better than Renmaru. Hold up. 0.7. Yeah, no, he's a better refunder than Renmaru. Renmaru is just, like, MP5, like, pretty much guaranteed. Uh, and has like a small battery. But I believe uh, Salieri can actually black rail loop. Mm, no. Yeah, like I think he just like. Yeah, it's like it depends on who's fighting. He can't do it consistently but against casters, maybe, but not against all classes. Uh, 10 stars per turn. Increases crit attack uh, damage three attacks five turns at 30%. I don't know why they even bother when the crit damage is that low like that. Like, it should just be, like, I don't know about five turns, but it's still, it, you shouldn't be losing hits over 30%. Arts up, three, three attacks five turns. Like, if they only wanted to do three attacks five turns, I mean, I get it, but it is 100% uptime. It is 100% uptime, but it's... And third skill. Defense down 30%, three attacks, five turns. Star weight uh, for 2000. This is better than if a Berserker used it, but they probably he's still probably wants more than 2000. And 100% crit damage for one turn. MP, AoE three hits, damage to all enemies. And reduces uh, star gen by 20% for three turns. Yeah, not good. Especially when he's trying to crit. Like, why is he reducing crit star gen? Uh, Arch res down AoE. Base 10. I don't think that's good enough. He is able to, like, arts farm. And he's an Avenger, which is, like, the class people like to do arts farming with. Just because they get, uh, they're more offensive and you get charged per turn, which is like sometimes what you need to just get back to an MP. Like it gets you like a little closer to the break point than if you didn't have it. Uh, like say you're at like 65, the you know, vendor passive like gets you close enough that popping batteries is actually going to work, even though it's not 70, like you'll be able to get up with a 30. B. Three more. Kufu, EX. Top of fucking EX. 
I like I will not hear anything about this. Shufu is so fucking good. Shufu is like literally a fucking four or five star out of one star cost. The only reason she's not a true five star is she basically does what Castoria does with a little uh, with a twist. You legitimately can use her um, in place of a Castoria if you need um, if you need the party cost. And I did that all the way till she got to Bonten while I was doing other Mystic Codes as well. Shufu is so fucking ridiculously good. Like, to the point, I can't believe they actually made her a free-to-play welfare. Um, or free-to-play uh, always in the low star pool. Quick needs a unit like Shufu. Truly. And, like, they're actually a unit... Shufu is actually a unit you can uh, solo with. That's how good their kit is. Heal for the party, 2,000. Cleanses the latest debuff, 30% MP gen for the party. Arts up for the party, 20%. Crit damage for the party, 30%. Power mod against undead, 30%. Increases crit attack chance for three turn or decreases. 20%. Yeah. Castoria, but power mods and healing. Whatever Castoria doesn't have, Shufu has. I mean, except overcharge, but uh, let's ignore that part. Third skill, 30% battery. Buff removal resistance for one turn. If you do this on uh, Concert U, 30% MP damage. And... Also, 20% battery on uh, Concert View. And even though it says charges increases one, um, you have to target them with it. Like, I know, like, the phrasing for this it might, you might think, oh, if I target, like, Castoria with this, you gets this. I'm pretty sure you need to ca uh, target you with this skill. It's not like an AoE thing. Especially because it says one concert you. If you're using both of them, you gotta make a choice. Although I'm sure Shufu would literally pass the fuck out if she was in between normal concert you and summer Guchan. Also, um, <laughs> to prove her simpiness as a passive, she d she gets an a, a attack demerit if she tries to attack uh concert you. I find it fucking hilarious. And also she uh, has like the hedonism passive where she gets and another reason why she's actually good at solos is because she actually gets more uh, gain when she gets attacked. NP 5k heal 20 stars per turn or five turns and heals uh, every turn for five turns. This is a fucking solo unit that also uh, is loop support and is arguably like the best out of the low stars. Paracelsus can kind of contest because of um, giving so much MP gain and giving the same arts buff, but he does not give a battery. Uh, Shufu does. The stronger the looper, uh, the better Paracelsus is, especially if there's ramp up. But if there's ramp up, you use Shufu. This is that this was probably the easiest EX of the, this tier list. And Mash. OG Mash EX Bunker Buster A. So, dog shit hit counts. We all know it. And a lot of MASH isn't unlocked. But the thing is, she has zero cost. Zero cost. So you can, uh, if you don't care about Bond and you need CEs, you just put her on the party and you just, you go from there. 
Uh, I personally don't do it because I'm always trying to uh, do bond point farming for as many units as possible. But they are making changes where, like, you might want to just do a mash. Um, uh, like, especially the um, Plank Earth where you, like, if you want to bond farm, like, those are very heavy five-star cost parties. So mash kind of want. But let's go through um, both versions. So OG mash. 20% defense for the party, 2,000 uh, damage cut for one attack. And these can stack up. I think they're just used up one at a time. Um, but you can have, I'm pretty sure you can have like multiple of these on at a, at a single time. Targeted battery, 20%. And invul. Taught for herself. And a 400% MP gen rate for one turn. Um, this goes away at the end of your turn. This does not apply to this. Not It's not like Leonidas. This will go away at the end of your turn. So do not bank on this to like brute, like shoot you up to the fucking moon of MP gain. No, no, no. This is so that when you hit the arts cards on this, uh, you get a stupid amount of gain. Uh, other Mashu. Black Barrel, one attack, three turns. Uh, gets 100% Buster up. Crit damage of Buster attack. One attack, three turns, 100% on a four-turn cooldown, and you have defense pierce for three turns. Taunt to all enemies to self, 300%, one turn, and 20% battery for herself on a five-turn cooldown. Invul for a turn, another taunt, ignores invincibility, and 30 star bomb. Yeah. They both are for very, 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 very different purposes. But both of them are very good at what they do. Like, mash on this one can kind of be a DPS if you, if you want to. Uh, you have to, like, you're basically just doing neutral numbers, but it is an option. And, yeah. MP. Start with the OG. Damage cut for three turns, 1,000 uh, damage cut, but I'm pretty sure we're, like, stuck at uh, MP3 right now. I, I, I haven't actually checked this in a while. Uh, yeah, MP2, three. Yeah, she's still at MP3. Yeah, so 700, uh, 775 uh, for the party. And increases the party's attack by 30%, except for herself. Three turns. And then party defense up, scales with overcharge, base 30, goes up to 50. OG Mashu is a fucking tank. If you need to stall shit, Mashu, Mashu can bring like so much defense to the point that you just don't take damage. Use her with waiver, and you actually don't take damage. And Ortonox, the buffer version of Lord Camelot. Damage cut, three attacks, five turns. In comparison to OG, which is just flat damage cut, no, uh, no duration. But she trades that for in letting everyone get the attack buff, including Mash. Because she's supposed to be a DPS as well, um, or gets the benefit of being a DPS, that's why the scaling is the way it is. Um, I do think it really should have started at 30, and then it could have just slow went up to 40. Uh, but that's just my opinion. No, actually, they needed to do it to distinguish the two MPs. Like a little, a little bit more.
But yeah, the main reason they're going into EX is because of cost. Other than that, what again, what they're what jobs they have, they do very, very well. Uh you would use the other units like George over them, but again, sometimes you like literally don't have the party cost to be able to do it. And or uh you just need them to die. Uh and like depending on your enemy, like bringing a rider to the fight, like if it's a caster boss, like the George isn't gonna die immediately. But you run the issue with your most people like I leveled my mash up to 90. So you she kind of has to get like fully blitzed to go, like go down for esports. If you have a level one uh mosh uh and you went through Lost Alt 7, uh A, dickhead. B, I mean, cool for esports. You have two taunts with and one of them is a star bomb, but oh well. All right. Uh I am happy with this. But uh yeah. So let's save it. Cost. Twenty four. All right. So let's see how different this is from the other one. Interesting. So I actually Bumped Uriel down. Yeah, Uriel I bumped down. Ushi I bop, bumped down. Salieri I bumped down. Uh, yeah, like this is not the same fucking list as last year. Yeah, like Boudica I put in D. I put her in D. I put Sugatani and don't use it all? Bro. Hey, what the fuck? No, wait, wait a second. How is Sugitani on this list, but not Theseus? That's cap. That is cap. Yeah, hang on. Yeah, no, okay. Yeah, the list is different. It is not the same list as last year. Even if it's, like, it looks similar, I have different opinions every time I do these tier lists. Uh, so, thanks for watching. Um, if you want to see me do these live on Twitch, uh, it's usually a Saturday at, like, 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, I try to do it in one sitting. It's, it's not easy. I'm ha I'm just happy that this went as fast as it did. All right.